Hey there, gorgeous gays. Version 2 here with Let's Play Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Today, we beat the game. We're at the final session, final trial, final case, final chapter, final villain to defeat. And it's just the chief of police, it'll be totally fine. Um, when we last left off, we found out that a teenager did a murder. Well, not a murder. But we did find out that a teenager took a life. Um, so, in just the continuing trend of making this case as traumatic as possible for everyone involved, a science teenager finds out that the most traumatic moment of her life is even more horrifying. Yay. I'm, I, 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 I hope it's worth it. <laughs> I hope it's worth it. Sorry, Edgeworth. I gotta point out, I have a new monster drink today that I'm drinking, and I got it for, for a very specific reason. What happens when the blue phoenix right and the red Edgeworth start making love? You get purple passion. <laughs> uh, stump. I mean, I didn't mean to get you in trouble. I mean, he was already in trouble. Dude was already in trouble. <clears throat> Don't worry about it. This is my problem, not yours, Babaka. How from that interrupting anything, see? Hey Chinchilla, what's up, buddy? <laughs> oh, guess I am. <laughs> I'll come back later. Bye. <laughs> Wait, Detective Chinchilla, what is it? Fade back in. <laughs> you got a lot of nerve, foul being a detective running around while on duty. And up it all if you got me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. I think Alana's having you run errands again. Let me tell you this last time, pal. Hey, she asked me to give you this if there was a break in today's trial. Evidence law. There's a little... There's a little chicken smoking a pipe. That's adorable. That's adorable. <laughs> Evidence law. I just was talking about this just the other day. You know, it came up before. You need, like, certain reasons to be able to present evidence in court. Yeah, it was against Star. You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Is that right, Mr. Wright? Seems so. I've never done a place so. Really study some evidence law, really? Well, I guess we'll study some evidence law. Chief Prosecutor also want me to give you a message, see? A message. She said, if you're planning to take him on, you're gonna need this book. Evidence law. Okay. How are we gonna use how you submit evidence against him? Him. Guess I'll need to uh, give this book a thorough read. From Miss Sky, explains the two rules of evidence law. Doesn't look like the book doing any good now, though. All that's left now is Chief Prosecutor sentence. That's where you're wrong, Detective. I mean, we have still not actually gotten around to the case we're discussing yet. <laughs> huh? Haven't you figured it out yet? Why I'm still sitting in that prosecutor's seat? Despite all these allegations being thrown at me. Mr. Antoine, the real trial today hasn't begun yet. What? What else is there left to do? Your credibility's been all but ruined with this forged evidence you aren't aware of. Emma Sky found out she unwillingly caused a man's death. And now you're telling me you want to do more? We haven't done the second half. We've done trial form, but we've still got to do trial letter. This is how this entire case has gone. You gotta be kidding me, pal. You're missing the point, Detective. Lana didn't murder Detective Goodman. Eh? She merely stuck a knife into his dead body. That means the real killer is still out there. Why? <laughs> we're gonna expose him, no matter what it takes. Before we're gonna continue on, I should probably have a read of this. 
Alright, so we are now just at the point where we have literally all three pages filled. Literally all three pages are filled here now. Okay. Rules for submitting evidence. Rule 1. No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Rule 2. Unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. Yeah, okay, those are the two rules that we knew before. So nothing has changed with what the rules are. But we need to find a way to use this against him. Okay. Finished Persona 3 a few days ago, full walkthrough Persona 5, 11, both. So let's show if I should give 4 shot. Especially since you bring up a, a, a game to country stuff. So I think you can give 4 shot? No, P4 is an evil game. Don't play it. It contradicts itself a lot, but it's also incredibly bigoted. Like, I go on about the queer phobia of the game a lot, but like, it's bigoted in a lot of ways. It's fat phobic as hell, it, it is sexist in a lot of ways, it is like, slut shaming. Like, it is, I think, literally the one type of bigotry that I haven't seen in Persona 4 um, would be specifically racism, and I think that's primarily because every single character is Japanese and no characters who aren't Japanese have been mentioned. But I also haven't beaten Persona 4, so that could, that could change too. Um... Yeah, if you got rid of the bigotry of Persona 4, it would be a half-decent RPG um, with fun characters and wacky situations, but you'd also get rid of roughly 70% of the dialogue, so... And also, yeah, it contradicts itself because, like, it makes themes and then ignores them. What it says its themes are and what the themes are when the story is actually going are at the literal opposite ends of each other. <laughs> The, the, the themes of the story are be your own person, find your true self, and accept it. Um, that, that, that's what, the, that's what the, the game says its themes are. And then in every single story cutscene, the theme is conform to what everyone else around you expects, or you'll be mocked, ridiculed, and physically assaulted. So, yeah. This case has hurt too many people. It's time to bring it to an end. I mean, like, if you if you combine this case with everything that's happened with SL9, I feel like this case has definitely impacted a shitload more people's lives than DL6. Like, DL6 got Hammond killed way later on. It ruined Yanni Yogi's life, um, and obviously killed Edgeworth's dad and traumatized him. But, like... For this, it's just like, it's Phoenix, it's both skies, it's Edgeworth, it's the Marshalls, it's Goodman, it's Star, it's so many people. That this entire fucking thing has just absolutely fucked up everything. I forgot, I keep forgetting, I bought this fucking thing and I keep forgetting to grab it, sorry. <laughs> Gordon will now reconvene for the trial of this Lana Sky. Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. The Inquiry Committee is planning to impose harsh penalties for your actions. It's about. Thank you for the news, Your Honor. Yes, well. <clears throat> normally, this is when the prosecution calls for a witness. But, uh. <clears throat> this isn't easy to say. You see, there is some concern that you, Mr. Edgeworth, may have, a. Uh... Struck a bargain? You think I may have manipulated the witnesses? I didn't say that. It's just, you see, everyone has been talking and... Very well, Your Honor. I have a solution. A solution? That being the case, the prosecution will allow the defense to cop off all of other witnesses. Oh! Oh! Okay. What? But there's no precedent for what you're proposing. Undeniably, this is an unusual arrangement, but a very effective one. It would prove that I haven't struck any deals with the witnesses. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? Unbelievable. Edgeworth has found a way to continue the trial. I mean... If everyone's cool, then I'd love to do that. 
I'd love to do that. That'd be sick. Very well. The defense accepts the prosecution's proposal. Then it's settled. The, uh, defense may now call forth the next witness. <laughs> oh, that's weird. That's weird for him to say. Hmm. This stuff is good, by the way. Like, I, because this will run out, because it's only 500 mils, unlike the one and a half liters that I have that, I do have my normal boomer juice here. <laughs> I'm a disaster, shut up. This is so good though. It's monster and like it's all caffeinated and everything. But it's way more like Powerade. It's not fizzy it's, um, or anything like that. It's it, it's the texture of Powerade. But it also tastes like Grape Fanta. It's so good. <laughs> Edward's placing a lot of trust in Phoenix here. Well, at this point, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's pretty clear that they're both working together. They're both working together at this point. Like, they want to they wanna solve this shit and put an end to this fucking shit at this point. They're actively working together to uncover the truth. But they go about it from different sides of what's happening. So I think it makes them a really effective prosecutor defense attorney duo at, um, at this stage. Like, if this is how this series continues, and it's more so Edgeworth and Phoenix, like, work together from opposing sides and opposing angles to co cooperatively come to the truth on cases, that's really cool. <laughs> like, that's set, like, that is, in theory, how prosecutor and defense attorneys should function. I mean, it's not, but you know, fuck everything. I so said this guy is one of those things that you learn to better appreciate and repeat value. My first case I finished this case, I didn't really like it much when I replayed again, became one of my favorites, but that's just me. So the thing is, this case is rapidly improving and it's been doing that since the end of like the first trial. It get, It is getting better and better and better. Even if the end of this case is fucking phenomenal, I'm still gonna think, but the first part of it is really bloated and padded and kinda awkward. <laughs> Which is the biggest issue. Which is the biggest issue that this case will have. And also the fact that it's a single case and it's over a third of the entire game. <laughs> Mr. Wright, you do realize this is your last chance. If you call the wrong witness, this trial is as good as over. The defense calls finally come to bring out the real murderer. Oh, what is going for it? Okay. So just straight up bring out the real murderer. Okay. Okay, I'm glad he told me that because I'm just like, should I bring out someone else first or should I just go for it? No, but Damon Gan. Bring him up. Damon Gant. The defense calls Damon Gant to the stands. D Damon Gant? What does he have to do with anything? As the defendant's partner two years ago. Mr. Gant has first-hand knowledge of the crime. I feel we should hear what he has to say about it. Hmm. As luck would have it, he should still be in the courthouse. And uh, once again, we're talking about the SL9 crime and not the dude who's dead in the back of this guy's car crime. It's taking us a long time to wind back to that. So this, I, I do appreciate at the very least, this is going in the exact opposite direction to before. Because before we were just like, okay, yeah, DL6 is connected. Now we know um, like that there's motive for this case. Let's solve that case. Afterwards, we'll do an impromptu thing to solve DL6. Where this is, we have to solve the entirety of SL9 before we can actually start focusing on our current case. Because we can't do anything in our current case without solving SL9. So we are going about it in... Uh, while we are doing something very similar to the immediate last case before this, we're at least going about it in a different way. I do appreciate that. He would also be the least likely to have been manipulated by me in any way. Wouldn't you agree, Your Honor? True. All right, Bailiff, please escort Mr. Gant to the stand. Witness, please state your name and occupation. What is this, some kind of practical joke? I was just on my way to lunch. Your name and occupation, sir. Well, are they? Are you sure you want to do this? Your name and occupation. So, you want to play hardball, eh? But please, Mr. Gantz. Fine. 
My name is Damon Gans. I'm the acting chief of police. Now then, Chief Gant, the court requests to hear your testimony. All right, oh, what's with the grim face? First, let's clear up this SL9 incident. Oh, you mean that time when Linus says something bad at that prosecutor? <laughs> Personally, I think it's been made pretty clear already. Yes? But you were hiding shit in your fucking safe for that. Also, the entire time that we did that, this never came up. There are still some things unaccounted for. Oh, like what? Like the role you played in all this. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy, this is so not gonna go well. Son, either you're very brave or very foolish. This dude is just openly, like, he don't give a single fuck, right? He doesn't give a single slightest ounce of a shit of a piss. Because he is just openly, I'm chief of police. You're an idiot if you try and do anything to me. Fuck you. <laughs> like, fucking hell. <laughs> You are aware, of course, that, the, uh, that a police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Fucking hell! Weapons? Sure, take my testimony, for example. I don't have to give it if I didn't- if I don't want to. What? Is that tr That can't be real! I mean, it can be, because corruption, etc, etc, but fuck- wait, really? I'm afraid so. The chief of police has the right to refuse to testify. Basically, unless he admits something flat out, he's fucking untouchable. He has the right to refuse to testify? Can you do that if you're called onto the witness stand? Or is it be specifically because he's chief of police he can do that? Could anyone do this at any point? And just all of the others were just stupid enough to think, no, I I'm gonna go against him, this fucking rookie defense attorney. I'll prove him wrong on my with my witness, fuck it. And and this dude's just like, I'm not taking any chances, fuck you. Why would I do that? Of course, such an action carries with it certain risks. Because he's chief of police? Fucking hell. Don't worry, I'm not here to hinder your trial. Just remember. If this turns out to be a big waste of time, don't say I didn't warn you. God, I cannot wait to bring this fucker down. He's just so fucking brazen about, I am corrupt, fuck you. Fucking hell. Very well, the witness may begin his testimony. Fucking hell. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. To make a long story short, we slept up. That power added shouldn't help either. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Apparently she had already arranged the crime scene. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the pottery. Hmm. Is that when Dark was arrested? Him? He was lying on the floor unconscious. When Emma said Neil fly, it seems Doc bumped his head. First major step towards fixing a corrupt system, take down the chief of police. I mean, I will say, I didn't come into this game expecting how open and honest it would be about how rampant fucking corruption is. Like, all of our major villains so far, except for like, I guess the business dude at the beginning, but even him is like, he's a business dude compared to Larry, right? But like, every major villain, like, Every major antagonist we've had in every single case has been someone who is in the highest position of power that has come up in that case. Like, it's literally CEO, movie studio owner, most, like, pronounced prosecutor ever, chief of the literal fucking police. <laughs> like, and how much the court, like, it shows that the court system is just like, very hard for defense attorneys to actually do their job and get people off and they can put away innocent people. 
not that much difficulty, really. Like, the game has been very honest with that, and goddamn, it's good. <laughs> I see, everything seems pretty clear cut. Judge, I need you to take all your biases and not just trust that the Chief of Police is being honest on everything. The police Chief has the right to refuse to testify. Then I better hit him hard and fast. Will he even answer my presses? So I recall, a ceremony was held at the police department that day. Yes, that's right, I guess you can say I'm a workaholic. After winning his award, Neil was all fired up to. It's probably what spoke dark and made him run away like that. Was the defendant in line of sky also present in the room? I don't quite remember. At the very least, she wasn't there when Dark ran for it. You slipped up. How did you let him get away? This seems like a mistake uncharacteristic of the people we're talking about here. So two of you ran immediately after him, right? That's right, but Dark made it to the elevator first. So Neil and I split up. He went upstairs and I went downstairs. I guess you could say, he got to lucky. This all makes sense. This, that does make sense how that would play out. What's this about a power outage? Murders happen when shit happens. Dude, your dad was murdered during an earthquake or something like that. Oh, well, that. The elevator stopped all of a sudden. I got the shock of my life. Well, probably not as shocked as Neil was when that knife went into his heart, though. He says while openly clapping. All right, this dude's a fucking psychopath. It's not funny. Went to the office fan line of it. Okay. Could you tell us what you saw? That was a shocking sight. Neil and that Zero killer were lying in a heap on the floor, all tangled together. Dark was also lying collapsed on the floor. Yes, apparently he hit his head and was knocked out. Next to them were those two poor girls. Lana, Lana was cradling Ember in her arms. Looking back at it now, she must have already known what her sister had done. Apparently she had already arranged Slam every time. How can you know that? Because of the victim's body. It had already been moved. So that means... You found the body near London's desk. That's right. I think you said earlier. It was my suit of armor that really sat the prosecutor? Yes. Anyway... So you're saying that the forgery had already taken place by the time you arrived at your office. That's exactly what I'm saying. I can understand how Lana must have felt, but moving a body and hiding evidence are inexcusable no matter what the circumstances. Is that how it really went down? Staring at the, at the witness won't do you any good, Mr. Wright. <laughs> if you're gonna stare at anything, stare at my glistening abs and pecs. You better off staring at the court record. Were they, were they always the small talker? Which piece of evidence ties Gant to the forgery? I did admit to forging evidence, but that can't be the whole truth. So I've got to link Gant to the incident. Yeah, this one. Because I'm, I'm trying to think this is like, there's a whole bunch of shit here. Because there's this, there's this, and there's this. Okay, if we're talking about the forgery of the crime scene, that's what we're discussing, right? The forgery of the crime scene? The forgery of the crime scene, I think, is this. <laughs> Damn it, me, wait, wait for now. Hi, Deku, welcome. Yeah, you, 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 you haven't missed much. I haven't even presented my first piece of evidence. This is literally the first testimony. You haven't missed too much. <laughs> we got a book of evidence law. You missed this duck smoking a pipe. <laughs> um, like, I want to say this, because this is, like, openly, he tore the evidence list in half and put it in there. But also, like, everything that's on here is stuff that was drawn after the murder. 
Like, after Neil died. So I don't think that's relevant to what we're exactly discussing. So I want to say this, because it was found in his safe. For now, we're trying to prove Gant did um, deal with forging the evidence. Like, I guess, oh yeah, for, yeah, we're talking about the forgery. It's not maybe not forgery in the crime scene, but forging the evidence that we get that was given to Edgeworth. I'll go with the evidence list. I'll go with the evidence list and see how it goes. Objection! You claim you had nothing to do with the forgery. But I'm afraid that is a claim you cannot back up. Both jar and evidence loot. Um, um, both the jar and evidence loot works for this objection, actually. Oh, nice! <laughs> okay, okay. That's cool. That's cool. Because they are both they, they both, they both do show that. They both do show that. Explain yourself. Several pieces of evidence were found in your office. Take this list, for example. That's the list I have a sky trooper a picture on. This was discovered in your desk. Yeah, we rifled through your shit, buddy. How do you feel about that? I mean, he knows that we did that because he literally walked in on us doing it, but still. Not only that, ah, there we go. But a, a piece of this jar that was sitting in your office was found inside your safe. It was found where? You see, Chief Gan, these articles of evidence uncovered in your office are both concrete proof that you also played a part in the illegal investigation. Hell yeah. Yeah, and the, and the crowd is just like, wait, the chief of police did this? Wait, what the fuck? Chief Gans, what is the meaning of this? Ha! Oh, here's a defense attorney who may even rival Worthy. I've literally beaten him like twice already, dude. So you admit to it then, that you were involved in the forgery? Ho, oh, me? What do you mean, yo? Me? Why would I have anything to do with it? Can we prove? He's got, if, if he's just gonna turn around and say, "Can you prove that it came from my office?" Fuck. <laughs> well, you're the one who snuck into my office when you found this evidence. Prosecutors aren't the only ones capable of forging evidence, you know. Defense attorneys can do so too. Oh. Isn't that the right, to right, oh? However, Detective Chinchilla was present during the investigation. Well then, my boy. Not even detectives are exempt from the law. Rest assured, Dick will receive his due punishment. Oh my god, finally someone else is making a silver case reference in the game. Fuck yeah. What? What? We already knew this. We already knew this. <laughs> if his salary drops any further, he'll end up paying the work. <laughs> As Tony, um, As Tony's gameplay is a, a good example of beauty and simplicity. Well, like, people shit on visual novels, but, like, holy shit, you can make visual novels so fucking hype. <laughs> like, you have to sell everything with music and writing, but then just be good at writing and music. <laughs> Yes, well, in light of the detective's presence, please give us your testimony regarding this piece of evidence found in your office and their relation to the forgery that took place at the crime scene. My, my, kids these days no longer know how to put tons together. Let's see, what was it now? A jar fragment and a list. For all I know, you're gonna blend them in my office. Anyway, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. If they were found out the doc was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I participate in a forgery. Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Hmm, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? When investigating the crime... Oh, sorry. I'm doing actual voice. When investigating the crime scene... You should have been more careful to observe protocol. We have protocol? You don't understand that I am the chief of police, right? There will be consequences. Oh boy. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't just run around stealing people's shit. Not because it's morally wrong, but just because, you know, we might get in trouble. <laughs> Indeed, I believe I will press charges so you won't make that same mistake again. Uh oh. 
Well, hopefully we put you in prison so you won't be able to file charges. My apologies, Chief, but would you mind waiting an, uh, until tomorrow for that? Today is, well, you know. All right, RJ, in return, though. I know, I know, that place, right? Uh, uh, are they banging after this? Or is it like their anniversary or what's going on? Huh? What are these guys, telepathic? <laughs> I just love how he calls him Oji, just implying that his name is actually Judge. <laughs> I'd appreciate yourself making these ridiculous allegations. He's gonna say the same thing back to us. When it comes to Danganronpa, it's pacing is held back by no necessary minigames. Couldn't run the pacing of Danganronpa 2. They are infuriating. I send you straight to the point when it comes to dealing contradictions. This is also a big bonus, yes. Danganronpa definitely feels like it needs to elevate its gameplay beyond visual novels by including minigames. And they're usually not good. <laughs> like, the minigames that are like, directly about like talking to people is fine like when you got to shoot down someone's statements or like have like battles of matching words and stuff like that or like countering someone's just like like rants and stuff like that those are all cool but when it's just like virtual reality skate down a thing to answer some questions it's just like okay that's getting a bit ridiculous that's like that stuff isn't necessary and i completely agree <laughs> I still find that stuff enjoyable, but in terms of pacing, I do agree, it does mess it up a bit. Like, any of the ones in this are, again, related to that, where we're, like, piecing things together, like, physically putting jar bits together. Like, it's all directly relevant to what's actually happening. And those have only existed in this case. Yes, you do have a point. You wouldn't have that guts to or something like that. What? I'll have you know, back in the day, I once broke into a cattle ranch and dipped... Mr. Wright, what are you saying? Anyway, you can't probably didn't carry in the evidence, can you? <laughs> Phoenix, we don't need you to prove that you're a bad boy by detailing the list of crimes you've done in your life. Anyway, you can't probably didn't carry in the evidence, can you? If you have proof to the contrary, you're gonna need it later. Later? What are you talking about? This dude's thinking like 5 day chess several steps ahead of us. He knows what we- He- This motherfucker. Real Nintendo DS hours. <laughs> So many mini games. This motherfucker. Okay, I'm now realizing what Damon Gant's doing. I now realize what he's doing. He is deliberately giving statements for us to contradict with things because he wants to lead us into a trap. He knows how Phoenix operates. He knows what we do. He's going to deliberately lead us into a trap. He's literally predicting it right now. Uh oh. Uh oh, I'm scared. I mean, we've had that before. Like. We, like, Von Karma did that to us before, of just, like, making us prove something that worked against us. Because he knows how Phoenix works. If Phoenix sees any contradiction, we have to go, go out of our way to prove it. Hell, didn't Edgeworth do that with the fucking evidence room murder? Retrain the parrot. <laughs> yes. Yes. Deliberately, like, leading Phoenix down a rabbit hole to screw himself over because everyone knows how obsessed he is with just find a contradiction and go through with it. You can't change this up, but it makes sense. You don't find a way to trap us. I guess that. I guess that's how we get. We have to do evidence law to get around that if that's what Lana. Like, if Lana knows that he's gonna do that, then Lana's plan is to use evidence law against that. Okay. Here's where this is gonna go. What else? I'm talking about when Rhydell's prints are found. Yes, if they're found inside my safe, this would prove his investigation was illegal. Never face anyone as slimy as this guy. What do you mean by that? This is all purely hypothetical, of course. But suppose I did place those items in my safe. Such an act wouldn't necessarily constitute forgery. If concealing evidence found at a crime scene isn't forgery... I'm not that I'm speaking yet, right now. It all depends on when the evidence was discovered. Suit! Suit! I'm not wearing a suit, Hannibal. I wore a suit for the other video. You missed it. I did it I did the end of Yakuza. I was wearing a suit for that one. I'm wearing a denim vest right now. I'm wearing my signature jacket. It's more important than a suit. 
But welcome to the tournament. If thou found out that Knock was convicted, then thou worthless. Um. Okay. Are you saying this jar fragment wasn't discovered in the initial investigation? And what appear not? After all, it wasn't listed in the evidence list. For all we know, it got us only materialized the day after Dark was sent us. Oh, and wouldn't that be convenient? Right. The chief is talking about a possibility. So long as you can't rule that out, your remarks, however clever they may be, will only succeed in wasting time. Tell me something, Adarner! <laughs> Come now, Raito, think about it. I was semi certain um, this was the stream I was uh, yelling about suits for, so I had to show up and yell suit. This was the, this indeed was the stream you were willing suit, uh, yelling suits about. But I'm not wearing a suit. I wore a suit for the other one, though. I can't wear a, su a suit two week, um, like in, in two streams in one week. Also, the dude that we're um, that we're playing as wears a blue suit, and I don't have a blue suit. All of my suits are various shades of black. <laughs> How can you look me in the eye and say that? And absolutely do it twice? Not nah, impossible. Impossible. Because I'm innocent. This dude is, like, not falling for Phoenix's trap. Like, normally when Phoenix pushes people by saying shit, they'll fall for it and expose themselves. This dude's just like, I'm not being stupid. What are, you, what are you talking about? Remember, who was it that murdered Neil? I'm not sure I care for the word murder here. But in the end, the person responsible for Marshall's unfortunate demise was in the sky. Well, now do you see. Time doesn't prove that pottery doesn't spontaneously appear out of thin air. <laughs> uh, literally possible? Uh, no, you, no. You, you can't wear the same outfit twice in one week. Otherwise, news articles will write headlines about you saying that, like, how terrible and shitty you are. So, like, I, I don't want I don't want the Daily Mail to just be like, streamer court wearing the same outfit twice in one week? What a poverty-stricken piece of shit this must be. Everyone should go ultra-murder them. Really, Chief Gan. At the very least, there is one very large benefit you'd, um, you've reaped from all this. Oh, I wasn't aware. What is this benefit? That would, of course, be the position you have, Chief of Police. This is true. This is true. He wasn't chief of police at the start of this case, and then he became chief of police solving it. But that's how I feel about you uh, not wearing a suit right now. Yeah, but see, if you want to ultra murder me for it, like, your method of ultra murdering me would be bringing me over to your place so I can get incredibly fucking drunk. And I'm fine with that. Like, if that's what kills me, oh no, ah. Terrible. <laughs> Gotta say, Phoenix been my role model for early years high school. Seeing him grow from an experience load is such a legend's great experience for me when I first played this game. How, yeah, like, the level of confidence and ability that he has, just uh, as this goes on, it is so, oh, this game is so fucking good. <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe intentionally wore the same outfit over multiple days. Paparazzi couldn't get any new photos of him. We did have, um, he's he's still a piece of shit and still fuck him in other ways. But there was one thing he did. We had a, um a, in Australia a morning show, a morning TV show presenter, who, like, was sick of the other women, like the women on the same TV talk show, where people would write articles about them for wearing the same outfit multiple to, um multiple times. Like if any of them were caught, like again, it's a morning show, so they did it every day of the week, um. Anytime they would show, like, anytime any of them was, had another outfit, even if it was, like, six months apart, then the the media would write an article about it. So he wore the same suit for literally an entire year, and no one said a fucking thing. And his point was just, like, so what the fuck? Blatantly sexist or just assume that women have to wear a different outfit every single fucking day. He, again, that guy's still a piece of shit, but... His, his point there was very true. Not a major point, but it was a, a, a point. <laughs> As Maya told Maya, he's a genius, just had no experience. He is very... Like, keep in mind, this is this dude's 
fifth case ever. He's been doing this for less than a year. <laughs> oh? The resolution of the S Online incident secured your promotion to Chief. That in itself is sufficient motive. Ho ho ho! Merry Christmas, my boy! Huh? Do you really think I'm that incompetent? What do you mean? Even without that case, I was already in line to become the next chief. The resolution of SL9 has barely sped up the inevitable a little. Is that true, Edgeworth? Yes. He was getting me made chief anyway. Oh. Be careful when pointing that finger, or you might wind up being the one pointed out. So that means... There's only one possible motivation for you to commit forgery. If you didn't do it for yourself, then you did it for someone else. Edgeworth, thank you. Thank you with the assist. Don't be silly, Worthy. You know me better than that. There are only three people I look out for. Me, myself, and I. Oh my god. You're a fucking cop. So that's very accurate and true, but like, the idea is that it shouldn't be that. Also, may I just say, this dude's tie is literally a cross. I don't even understand how that's possible. But fuck it makes an imposing um, figure as, the, uh, as part of the rest of his outfit. There, it's out in the open now. RJ, uh, would you mind if I change my testimony a little? By all means, please do. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I wouldn't be anyone's accomplice if there was not if there was nothing in it for me. Nothing in it for you. Sorry, but the only care I care, person I care about is your Strolly. Let's go, lad as little sister, was it? If you think I felt sorry for her, you better think again. I'm a heartless son of a bitch. You're right. You don't feel sorry for anyone. Bit tough on crime and tough on people. That's how I was raised. Yep, you're an asshole. You seem to be lax enough you know, on yourself. Ho ho ho! Oh, that's a good one, Wadi. Hmm. Could there have been something in it for him? Given his selfishness, he would have had. Um, would he have helped someone out? Do we have evidence to suggest that? I mean, like, I know what his reasoning is blackmail the shit out of Lana but like we don't have evidence for that do we other than he hid the stuff like he kept the stuff in his safe for several years afterwards as blackmail yeah everything that's before that I'm curious if this is going to show up at any point <laughs> It's like the one piece of evidence that we have here that we've never used in any capacity. He would have helped someone out, yes. True, you might not help out anyone for this. Say, I just don't know if I have evidence. I know exactly what I need to say, I just don't know if I have evidence for it. True, you might not help um, out anyone for their sake, but if it would benefit you, you might decide to assist someone. Mr. Wright. It appears you're positively determined to the, portray the chief as a nice man who likes to lend people a hand. <laughs> Judge, I need you to get better. Very well then. Who is this person you believe Chief Gan may have helped forge evidence? Ah, uh, Lana. <laughs> Literally, who else would it be? I don't know if you were talking about that screwdriver is actually evidence from April May's room. I pointed that out when I saw it, and I surprised people in chat with that. <laughs> I'll say this later, long cases in this series are better about clearing out old evidence you, um, you no longer need. Oh, it's, it would be nice to be able to cut down the fucking list. I need a fucking Resident Evil pop-up that says, you will no longer need this, do you want to discard it from your inventory? That's what I fucking need. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky, the defendant? I believe it's quite obvious in light of the circumstances. Literally did this to blackmail her so he could control the prosecutors and the police. 
Like... <laughs> Emma Sky fell victim to an unfortunate series of events. Who would want to help her more than her and sister Lana? And as for Chief Gan, he would also have a reason to help Lana if she asked him to. That reason, of course, is... Self-profit. Self-profit? What do you mean? After the SL9 incident was resolved. Lana Sky was appointed Chief Prosecutor at the Prosecutor's Office. The person who arranged this job change was you, Chief Gan. But how would he profit from all this? He would be able to use Chief Prosecutor as his puppet. Essentially, he would acquire unchecked authority over all investigations. Do you mean to tell me that despite the Chief's formidable appearance, he plays with puppets? Judge, please help. <laughs> Just dead silence. Oh, wait. You must be a puppet as someone forced to do his bidding. Never mind. <laughs> Admit it, Chief. You assisted Lana Sky in forging evidence. Your motive? To appoint her as Chief Prosecutor so you could control her. Right on, my boy. You have quite an imagination. Let me ask you something. What? Do you have any proof of this? That I controlled Lana? For example, is Lana testifying that I've done such a thing? Lana. She's keeping quiet to protect Emma. D and that is too late at this point. That is too late at this point. We have... We, we cannot roll back the train on that. And I forget the judge for his enthusiasm. The judge gets just so excited about silly little things. He's absolutely the type of dude who has like a model train set back home and he, and he gets giddy when he gets like a, a, a new gauge of train track so his like his other trains will not fit on there. He's like exactly that type of person. Then he gets a kindly old man who does puppet shows for orphans. But all the puppet shows are about how the cops take down the bad guy and cops are heroes. No way she testify against Gan. Emma's already screwed. At this point, fuck it. <laughs> like, again, I'm pretty sure we've determined at this point, Emma can't be charged. The case is like literally closed. It legally cannot be opened again. Like two years past, they did the transferal. I'm pretty sure that means at this point, legally that case can't be reopened. And, and like protecting Emma's mental state, sure. But again, that's a that's a ship that has sailed. Come back out here and testify. <laughs> I'm afraid without any proof, this all must amount to nothing more than mere conjecture. Unless that is also what happened in this incident. This incident? Or uh, which one would that be? There's a lot of shit going on. I kind of forgot. Lost track. Of course, I'm talking about. The murderer detective Bruce Goodman. The chief prosecutor has been acting strange throughout the end of this entire trial. Almost as if someone has been controlling her. Wavey, you'd better watch your tongue. I wouldn't want you to get hurt. This motherfucker is openly threatening people so many times. Like, in court. He's the chief of police. He does not fucking care. Like, he knows he's untouchable to the extent where he can openly threat, uh, threaten people in court and just nothing happens because he's untouchable and he's completely aware of that and he abuses it. Fucking Christ. Fuck you, Gan. My God. Like, Von Karma is like... Von Karma is still, like, obviously evil and still obviously a horrible person, Von Karma's, like, prideful and vengeful and stuff like that, where this dude is just openly, brazenly corrupt. <laughs> like, obviously, Von Karma is still corrupt, but his cor anything that he does for corruption is just... I'm a vengeful, spiteful prick, and I'm a perfectionist. Where this dude is just like, I'm corrupt to just get as much fucking power as possible, and I don't fucking care who knows it at this point. Like, goddamn. 
Just what do you mean? What he means, Your Honor, is that Chief Gant is involved in the murder of Detective Goodman. Not only that, but the Chief is now making Lana take the rap to cover up his involvement. What? 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 <laughs> order! 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 I said order! Mr. Wright, you can't be serious. Huh? This... This is an affront to the highest ranking officer in our law enforcement agency to accuse the chief of police of blackmail and murder. That, 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 that is impossible. Everyone's just yelling. <laughs> Damon Gant sings the rap music too? Judge. <laughs> Your Honor, I was merely reiterating what Mr. Edgeworth said in easier to understand language. <laughs> it's too late, Mr. Wright. There is no turning back for us now. <laughs> oh, looks like he's the one who's decided to go through with this. Oh, we are just openly working together. Oh, I love this. Oh, I love this so much. This, this case took a while to get its fucking, like, train going. But holy fuck, since it's been going, like, at some point during, like, part two, fuck has it just been going. <laughs> that the chief, a high-ranking officer of the law, is involved in this murder. Good question. Regardless of his rank or title, Chief Gant is just a man. The question is, is he a criminal? I believe the evidence will tell. I see. All right, then. Let's see what Mr. Wright's got, and it better be good. Show us this evidence that ties Chief Gant to the murder of Detective Goodman. I can only think of one thing. I just don't know where it is. Where is it? Oh, I have to like jump through so many, I have to jump through hoops to prove this. But also, if we're talking about the murder of Goodman, we've established like, and we're still establishing that that, oh God. Oh God, I don't know. This is the only thing I can think of that ties Gant directly. Like to the murder. Tying Damon Gant to the cover up is easy. Tying Damon Gant to the murder is way harder. But I can only think of this. The question is, does Edgeworth at this point have the thing to confirm who that number is belonging to? Like, I literally think that was something we were told to go invest- like, he was told to go investigate. But, like, he knew it was an executive number, so he- like, it had to take time to do it. The only thing I can think of. I'll go with it. This is the ID card list. Yes, the one that shows who entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. There was one ID on the list we couldn't determine the owner of yesterday. 77777777. Sorry, but there's no way you can prove that's my ID. My card number. It's your number. Uh, what? How do you know that? The safe in Chief Gant's office requires a code to open. A seven-digit code. Seven digits? You don't mean... I'm afraid so, Your Honor. The code was 77777777. The same as the remaining ID card number on that list. Chief Gant. Yes! Oh, fuck yes! Oh, it is good to see you squirm, bitch! Uh, fuck yeah! Uh, 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 uh. Oh, I made a mess of my head. Ah! Ah, oh, seeing this bitch squirm is good! <laughs> School at Super 7 to make it easier on yourself? That's not fun. Oh. Oh. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> He's aware we've got something on him now, bitch. Oh, God. Chief Gan, you entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. <laughs> order, order! Chief Gant, what do you have to say? Nothing. 
The defense's search of my office was in violation of regulations. And I will demand Mr. Wright be punished to the maximum extent of the law. Edgeworth, what the fuck? <laughs> but right now, this court demands an explanation from you about the use of this ID card. <laughs> what are you gonna save yourself, bitch? <laughs> Chief Gant, so you admit it? You entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. What about it? Time Chamber Police! Whether it's the evidence room or the bathroom, what's the difference? I can go anywhere I want. Tell me, when you entered the room, were you alone? <laughs> I always go to the bathroom alone, as I do with the evidence room. Detective Goodman wouldn't happen to be with you that day, would he? Oh, Wed is going for it. Oh, fuck he, oh! Oh, fuck! This dude's just like, oh shit, they actually fucking know. Fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> of course not, why would he be? I hadn't seen him in days. You hadn't seen him in days? Cheap games. I'm afraid you've just undone yourself. On that day, you had to have met with Detective Goodman. He would have been there for the, the prosecutor's trophy. All right. <laughs> what do you mean? This trial's purpose is to determine Lana Sky's guilt. <laughs> no, it isn't, Your Honor. This trial's purpose is to determine the truth. If Chief Gant met with the victim on the day of the crime, then we need to determine one thing. What transpired during that meeting? <laughs> In that case, Mr. Wright, sorry, I'm gonna make up for several of them. <laughs> In that case, Mr. Wright, I'm gonna have to ask you for evidence. Show us proof the victim went to the judge, um, to meet Chief Gant on the day of the crime. Oh. Oh. Yes! Yes, lost item report! Can only be submitted to the Chief of Police! Take that. Detective Goodman lost his ID card on the day of the crime. I forgot about this part! Oh, good! Detective Goodman lost his ID card on the day of the crime. Or to be more accurate, Jake Marshall stole it. So Detective Goodman filled out a lost item report. He would have had to give that report to the Chief of Police. Yet you are in possession of the report, which means you can't be sure if he filled it. He filed it. How do I know? Wait, so, what am I doing? I'm getting my voices mixed up. I'm too high. He filed it. How do I know you ask? Because he needed to enter the evidence room that day. He needed to? Yes. To transfer the evidence out. Oh. Detective Goodman took the form to you, Chief Gant. Then, <laughs> you accompanied the detective to the evidence room. I accompanied him. There's no other way the murderer and Detective Goodman could have entered the room. Hold on, let me guess what you're going to say next. I, the chief of police, murdered Paul Goodman. Yes, exactly. Oh god. We're fucking in it now. We're in it now. No turning back. But wait. The chief didn't necessarily need to accompany him to the evidence room. He even has lent him his ID card. Yes. And now that you'll mention it, I believe I might have done something of the sort. <laughs> Sorry, but that's not possible. Uh? <gasps> oh, I just realized something. Bloody prints that don't have any fingerprints. Oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> According to the record, your card was only used once. Yet you showed us your ID or card earlier. If you had really lent it to Detective Goodman, it would have been found on his body. No! 
Oh, fuck! Oh, shit! Motherfucker just got struck by lightning! Chief Gant, you didn't! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, it's good to see you squirm, bitch. The murder was most likely the spur of the moment crime, but no one in their right mind would choose the police department as a place to commit murder. <laughs> I may have insisted on Zeus voice for a reason. <laughs> oh, oh, you fucking geniuses. <laughs> you fucking geniuses. Oh my god. After the murder, you contacted Lana at the prosecutor's office. Why? To dispose of Detective Goodman's body, of course. Objection. You're forgetting, Mr. Wright. That the victim's body was discovered in the prosecutor's parking lot. How did he manage to move it there? Oh, it's finally gonna come up! <laughs> I was at the police department the entire day, you know. And everyone's aware that Lana stayed at the prosecutor's office after the ceremony. Everyone except me, it seems. Still, you're the chief of police. You have an entire police force at your disposal. Oh, so you think I just order an officer to do it? Hey, y'all, take this here dead body over to the prosecutor's office. I don't think so. <laughs> chief Gant, you left all the evidence we need to prove how you moved the body to the prosecutor's office. And all this time I thought it was just a useless clue just taking up space! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I love the call out. I love the call out because I literally brought it up earlier. <laughs> the game fucking knows. Ah! How could the chief have moved the body? Mr. Wright, show us this evidence. To move the victim's body, Chief Gant used this. Oh, finally it comes up. Full circle. This is how we move Detective Goodman's body. Now, Judge, I need you to not immediately say he shoved the body over with a screwdriver. What's that? A screwdriver? Well, what does this have to do with this case? Mr. Edgeworth, think back to the day of the crime. What is this screwdriver doing here? It's here because... Ah! Oh, shit, he didn't even realize. He didn't even realize. I was asked to go by Chief Gant, no less. Yeah, I see he unscrewed the door. <laughs> Wait, what? It's a garage door, what? <laughs> he told me he wanted me to keep this here, um, to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. He just gave him any excuse to drive back. <laughs> to get the body away from there. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this back here. <laughs> After the ceremony ended that day, I didn't plan to return to the prosecutor's office. But you did, because Chief Gant asked you to. You mean I, I... The body was found in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. I think it's obvious what happened. The body was moved by that car. Detective Goodman's body was carried in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. Yes. Unless, of course, you have another explanation, Chief. Why else would you have asked Mr. Edgeworth to transport evidence from a closed case? It's all part of transferal. We know it's not two years ago, because it happened less than a year ago. There's only one plausible explanation. To transport the body to your accomplice, Miss Lana Skye. Order, order, order! What's going on here? Is there no room for rebuttal to defense's outrageous accusations? <laughs> Think back to the photograph Miss Star took of the prosecutor's office. This was not a photo of the body being stuffed in the trunk to be taken away. It was exactly the opposite. It is a photo of the body being taken from the trunk. Chief Gant, please say something! I'm sorry. I saw Chief Gant, I saw Chief Gant and I decided doing the voice. Ah! Yeah, please say something. I believe. Your time's up. My time's up? Sorry, Raito, but I'm having lunch with the district attorney general after this. We have to get going if we're gonna make it in time for the early bird special. What the fuck is your point? Fuck you. What? 
But the cross-examination isn't finished yet. Remember what I told you earlier. A police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Like the right to refuse to testify. I'm invoking that right now. What? That is not a right, that is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. So you're gonna just run away after all this. Run away? Don't make me laugh, were they? I stabbed the old gunman. That's what you're saying, right? But if you had any conclusive evidence, you would have just presented it by now. Well, I... You think I'd learn to dispose of the body? If so, then show your proof and get it on the web. I'll say it again, Mr. Wright. Damon Kent is the current chief of police. This court will not tolerate any accusations against him without concrete proof. Well, Mr. Wright? Y y your Honor? Do you have any concrete proof? Prove that Chief Gant murdered Detective Goodman and made Miss Sky dispose of his body. Do I have any concrete proof? Concrete proof. I can only think of this. I can only think of this. But that but when they're talking about concrete proof. Cause this would have gone from the evidence room into the car shoved in the muffler, right? Because that's where we found, like, we didn't find this in the evidence room. Is that concrete? No! Doesn't have any prints or anything to link him to the knife, though. That's, that's my point. That's my point. Thing is, I don't have anything concrete. I don't. Like, I feel like just saying, no, I don't is dumb. But what do I have? Like, if I say I don't have anything yet, I'm kind of just hoping Edgeworth brings up something that I can bring up, that I can bring up something to tie it with it. To do that. Because if we're talking about anything concrete that shows that, no, I don't. Doesn't want to hear a bluff right now. That's my idea. I don't have anything. I don't. I'm going to say I don't. Because I don't. It's no use showing evidence. I'm not sure, <laughs> even sure of myself. No, Your Honor. At present, I have no conclusive evidence. Hum. Say, RG. In that case. Oh, I. <laughs> I pressed the button accidentally twice. I think I said forced to penalize you. Never gamble what you can't afford to lose, right, though? See if that Lady of Luck was on my side again today. Okay, RG, I'll leave the rest of you. I think I did wrong. I warned you early, Mr. Wright. Okay, yeah. Ah! Oh, okay, this is part of what we're meant to do. This is part of what we're meant to do. Okay, I, I thought I failed, sorry. 
Sorry, okay, I- Ah, oh, oh, video game! It showed the damage thing about not exploring! <laughs> ah, fuck you! If you skip past the dialogue of him saying he'll penalize you, <laughs> then you legally can't get in trouble. <laughs> Lady, look, maybe we should have a word with her. Mr. Edgeworth, what do you mean? There is one lady who knows the real truth behind this trial. We haven't yet had the honor of hearing her testimony. A lady who knows the truth. Another witness. In the absence of conclusive evidence, the only other method of proof is testimony. But if Ganon's invoked his right to refuse to testify. I Phoenix, catch up. There is still someone else. One more witness who can answer all the questions raised in this trial. Someone right in this very room. Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. Edgeworth. I get my voice mixed up. Mr. Edgeworth, who is this person? <laughs> All evidence is everything in court. Such a flood of like for court system because so many criminals can take advantage of it to get away with their crimes. I mean, you need evidence. But also what they define as a... The entire system's fucked, is basically my point. <laughs> so my thing is... I am way more concerned about innocent people being put away than guilty people not being put away. I, I care way more about that. So... Why are you asking me, Your Honor? Have you forgotten? The defense is the one calling the witnesses today. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wright, does such a witness exist? She may not be willing to tell the truth. But we can't just stop now. Yes, Your Honor, the defense calls for... Miss Lana Sky. Miss Lana Sky? She was in the underground parking lot at 5.15 on February 21st. Her task to dispose of the victim's body. In accordance with a certain someone's orders. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution has no objections, Your Honor. See, the thing is, I don't know if in a court of law, if the defendant takes to the witness stand and says, I didn't do it, someone else made me. I don't know if the defendant specifically calling that forth does that, but if it brings us evidence, then it'll be fine. Very well, the court will take its final recess for the day. In 15 minutes, we will reconvene to hear the defendant's testimony. This court is now in re- Hold on. Huh? Chief Gunn, I thought you were going to, <laughs> going to eat. Listen, good Lana. Oh God, he's talking to Lana. I don't think you need me to tell you all this, but if you accept Mr. Wright's claims, there will be terrible consequences. Just again, openly threatening shit. I'm going to, you are going to suffer if you tell the truth. That is important, but also it comes at the expense of accepting uh, common sense is something valuable to find the truth. It's more often than not common sense linked to public opinion. Public opinion is uh, evidence. That's a loophole of the court system. Yes, but if we're going by that logic, Public opinion is used to put away innocent people, so again, and I care more about that. <laughs> My argument is the entire way we go about a criminal system, just like a court system, and its very foundation needs to be changed. Like, everything about how it functions doesn't make sense. <laughs> so it needs to be like destroyed from the ground up and rebuilt to be completely different, because nothing about it makes sense. <laughs> That's right. Your sister will be found guilty for Neil Marshall's murder. The case is closed. I don't think that can happen anymore. Ah, this isn't good. Isn't that literally something we've brought up though? Two, case, two years after a case closes, it can't be brought up. Isn't that literally the point of transferal? That's when the case closes. Unsolved is 15 years. Solved is two. Of course, you'd never support such an outrageous claims anyway, right? Just something to think about. Alright then, I've got a lunch date to meet. And he's just like, okay. The <laughs> judge is just like, uh, okay. If there aren't any further objections, this court is now in recess. I feel like we're screwed. <laughs> I mean, we're not, but I feel like we're screwed. Also, Gan is in charge and doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, again, openly, brazenly corrupt. Because he's an asshole. Looks like we managed to stay in the game. Yeah, thanks to your help, Edgeworth. That change be something else, eh, pals? Chinchilla! Hello! 
<laughs> I'm not a detective anymore. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Ah, don't worry, see? I already decided where to work now. At your own office. Wait, what? Why mine? Why mine? <laughs> Go work with Edgeworth. He's the one you have a crush on. I guess prosecutors tied close enough to the police department, you probably wouldn't be allowed in there. My office. Charm. I'll take the place that I top nine guy he used to work with. You're not replacing Maya. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Did he mean Maya? Stell. <laughs> Looks like we're all out of moves now. Chief Gans down again. I don't think he always gets the upper hand because he's the chief of police. How fairy is the right to refuse to testify. <clears throat> Settle down, right? Remember what the judge said. It does come with consequences. Risks. What did he mean by that? It's simple. If the chief refuses to testify, the opposite also holds true. You mean he forfeits the right to say anything too? Emma! She's like, <laughs> Emma, are you okay? Best Buster Wolf! Wolf! She's conscious. She's dealt with the murder she did. Yay! Yeah, when I came to, I was in the medical office. I'm listening to the trial from the gallery. So she heard everything that's been going on. Um, Emma, I'm sorry for what I said before. No, don't be. It was the truth. You know, it's funny. I almost feel somehow relieved. I did really hate Marshall. <laughs> sorry. Relieved? Yeah. Now I finally know what really happened. To think that all this time... My sister was being blackmailed by that terrible man. <laughs> well, it's better that my sister was blackmailed into being a terrible person rather than she decided to be a terrible person. And she did it all just to protect me. It's probably why she didn't want to talk to you much. She felt guilty. Ever since her appointment as chief prosecutor, everyone who knew her said she changed. Perhaps it was easier than what do you mean? It's easy to do the chief's bullshit if you just become a cold-hearted person. Just shut off your emotions so you can deal with what you have to fucking do. What do you think I mean? To follow Chief Gant's orders. She must have shut herself up deep inside. To force herself to do anything and everything that she told her to do. That must be why she became so cold. It was all my fault. It's all because I murdered Neil Marshall. You did not murder him. Like in a legally distinct definition, you did not murder him. Like, manslaughter? I don't even know if, like. Like if in the act of self-defense it accidentally happens. I'm assuming that like, that still counts as like, like that's like, manslaughter and you didn't even like take like actions that like knowingly might have done that it was just pure accident hey don't go blaming yourself now if you want to blame anyone blame society pal all right if anyone if anyone wants to paint the joker face on chinchilla by all means go for it chief game may be able to fool everyone else with his forgery but he can't fool my memory. I remember now. I knocked Mr. Marshall into that armor. I I see. Well, we better get back. It's time for the final act. <laughs> there's a yes, there's a joke right already. <laughs> of course there is. Emma, why don't you wait here? No. No, I'm going with you. I keep seeing people's names because someone's talking to them. And then the name that I see is the person's voice who I do. Cause I'm um what's that thing called? Um because I have, um, being a fuckwit-itis, right. I want to be there when Lana tells the truth. Let's go, right? It's time to end this. Wait, and, wait, you're hitting me with another to be continued? Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Three-part trial? Wait, what? <laughs> trial ladder two? What the fuck? 
<laughs> Wait, trial ladder two. Then the trial, the trial, the other one's trial mid. It's not trial ladder. Why? I mean, that one was only an hour and a half. Only. I, I say that one was only an hour and a half. That's how long most trials have been before this. But in this case, most halves of trials are still about two hours. I want to be there when Lana tells the truth. As such, I'm going to go get some lunch and come back. I'll give her like 15 minutes before she actually starts telling the truth, because I know she went immediately. <laughs> this is it, the real final part. Jesus Christ. My God. Trial latter two. Three part trial. My God. It's not enough that every trial in this case has been two parts already. Nah, the final one has to be three. I will say... This trial doesn't feel padded. It just feels like there's a million things to cover before we get anywhere. I do agree with the idea that like part of this trial probably could have been in the second trial. Part of the second trial could have been in the first trial. <laughs> Cause most of the first trial I still think is kind of pointless. And also with how much pointless that first trial is and how long two and three have been, it definitely could have been paced better. This case is paced not great and padded, but at least the ending is exciting as fuck. <laughs> now then, will the defender Miss Lana Sky please take to the stands? Hi, Lana. Miss Lana Sky, you are the chief prosecutor. I'm sure you're aware of what is required of you. But Mr. Redwood, you already know everything. You know all that I've done these past two years. Please provide the court with your testimony, Miss Sky. And remember, you are on road. We want to hear the truth. Of course. The truth. Lana, no matter what happens, I'll always be your sister. Well, don't say that. It's just going to make a lot of lies so you don't go to prison even more. Jesus. Now then, your testimony, if you will. First, tell us about your relationship with Chief Gantz. Everything hinges on your testimony. Be fucking honest, Lana. You're the only chance we have to get Gan. Come on, please. I have I, I, I'm still so unsure at this point whether she's gonna fuck us over or not. Gant in the fabrication. Let's do this. I worked alongside Gant for years. There's no truth to this blackmail theory. Ah, oh, for fuck's sakes. I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. Fucking damn it! When I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. My only motivation was to get Drake convicted. It had nothing to do with Emma. Lana, I need you not fuck me on this. And everyone else. Are you sure about this testimony? Your Honor, I'm confessing to a capital offense. Of course I'm sure. But Lana! If this is true, then that means Chief Gant has nothing to do with this. That's what I've been telling you from the beginning. Please, Mr. Wright, you've got to help her. She's sacrificing herself because of me. What if she's telling the truth? Phoenix! No! No, you shouldn't even be questioning that at this point. She's not. I know my own sister. Whenever she speaks stiffly like that, she's hiding something inside. Okay, well, at least I appreciate that I've been doing her voice then accurately. If she is speaking stiffly, I appreciate that I've been doing her voice well, properly. <laughs> Deep down, she's really screaming in agony. Yeah, this is no time to start second-guessing myself. Thank you, Phoenix. Jesus Christ. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Gant in the fabrication. Alright, go through the process. Press on everything. How many years exactly? Ever since I made senior detective. Let's see, I was 24 then, so that would be five years. Detective Gant and Detective Sky were legendary partners. I personally saw them testify in numerous cases. Which must have been good. Oh, fucking. Ah, I. The way I'm pressing buttons today, I'm accidentally skipping shit. Ah! Damon Gant was a respectable detective. That's why. I tried to lie about theory. <laughs> Bullshit. But think about it, Miss Skye. You didn't murder Detective Goodman. You told me as much yesterday in jail. You still don't get it, do you, Mr. Wright? Any testimony you cannot present in court is as useless as idle gossip. 
I stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. And... Fabricate the evidence all by myself. Please, okay. Bullshit! Did you do so to help your sister? Joe Dark was a serial killer. My sister almost became his last victim that day. I didn't want that incident to ruin her life. But what she did was justifiable self-defense. She wouldn't have been charged with anything. That's not the point. She was traumatized that day, all because of that creep. That's why I couldn't forgive him. Mama. So that's why you fabricated, um, why you fabricated the evidence two years ago. Rearrange the crime scene, okay. You say you did this all by yourself. Yes. Would you mind telling us what you found when you arrived at the crime scene? It seems I was the first person to discover the scene. The broken prosecutor a wooden arm knife was stuck in the victim's body. What? The prosecutor Marshall died from an unfortunate accident. That's only a situation you dreamed was possible. The reality is, it wasn't my sister who took the prosecutor's life. Fantasize all you want, Mr. Wright, but I'll never change this statement. You mean, Prosecutor Marshall will end up being killed by Dark? Something like that. If that is so, what happened to the other murder weapon? Dark was carrying a switchblade knife. Oh, that was lying on the floor a little distance away. It was probably knocked away in the struggle. It's not how it went down, she's trying to cover up her lies with more lies! Or just to protect me. Is... Is Emma reading my mind? I feel like she is. So when you found the scene like this, what did you do? After all, this is what everything boils down to. Yes. Broke the, I broke the tip of Dark's knife, planted it inside the wound, and then moved the body. You planted the tip of Dark's knife in the victim's wound, and then you moved the body. But why? Why would you do that? You of all people should know, Edgeworth. You've always had a good head on your shoulders. My head isn't that bad, <laughs> but maybe I ought to ask for the sake of the others. What about my head? That's not what you're asking, Phoenix. <laughs> He's just thinking, my boyfriend's hotter than me, what the fuck? <laughs> Why'd you plant the knife? Why'd you move the body? Why'd you plant the knife? But why did you do that? Come now, Mr. Wright. Even you should be able to figure it out. Ouch! Very well, let's add this to the witness's testimony. The reason Miss Sky fabricated the knife. It's kind of running joke on how other people can read your mind in this series, but it'll be more noticeable in the I don't need to know about future games! I need the tip of the weapon found buried um, in his body would be all the proof we needed. According to your testimony, Prosecutor Marshall's broken knife was the murder weapon, right? Yes, and leaving it at that might be uh, my point to blame away from Dark. I felt the most effective way was to get him convicted would be by having the tip of his knife found inside the victim's body. So you, you buried it inside the victim's stab wound? Yes. Because I hated Dark for what he did. Hmm. So you rearranged the crime scene. Are you sure you didn't do this to keep Emma from looking like the murderer? How many times do I have to tell you, Mr. Ryan? Emma didn't do it. Period. Are you so desperate to hide that fact? You're willing to risk the death sentence? She's lying! She said so I wouldn't be blamed for what happened. In any case. As a prosecutor, what I've done is unpardonable. There's nothing I can do to make up for my actions. Mr. Wright, my sister's lying! Which I'm determined, um, determined to protect you to the end. She insists she fabricated the evidence by herself. There's no way she could have done it alone! Gotta get her to talk more. If she's lying, then she's bound to slip up and make a contradiction. At some point, she will. I think that we can ask a second thing on this.
Or maybe I can't ask about the other one now? Can I not ask about the other one? What statement was it on where I could ask two things? The one where they were talking about how good they are at giving head or whatever it was? I feel like that statement's disappeared now. I thought I could ask on that. I mean, I have an idea of what I can do to move forward. I have an idea for this one. So I'm gonna present this one. It's the only thing I can think of. Objection. No? Okay, no. Okay. 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 I was thinking that had nothing to do with Emma. Emma's name is written. Oh, whoops. Kind of this case, have Neil's autopsy report as um, evidence. It does. It does. If we go over here, it talks about how he was specifically stabbed in the back. Because I brought this up a lot. About just like the stabbing picture that Emma drew is clearly stabbing in the front. So that's how I knew that shit was. That shit was. Um, wrong. Yeah. Yeah, we have. Yeah, we have this. Though I can't see anything here that would suggest anything. But I rearranged the scene, okay. Yeah. This? Oh yeah, it is this one, okay. I just couldn't remember which statement it was. Okay, why did you move the body? When you showed up on the scene, where exactly was the victim's body? It was where you deduced it was, by Chief Gant's desk. But the body was found by your desk. Why did you move it there? The reason for that is simple. Let's have the witness explain this in more detail. The reason Miss Sky's body was moved. Okay. Okay, so now that changes the statement. The base of the jar that shattered during uh, the events threatened my plan. Pieces of the jar, you mean... Yes, that wretched jar you showed us earlier. <laughs> Even in her an emotional estate, she's referring to this as wretched. In order to show that Dark committed the crime, I felt it would be more expedient to move the body. So, when you first found the body, the jar was all ready. Of course, it had been shattered to pieces. If you looked at, um, at the crime scene, it would... It, if you looked at the if you looked at the crime scene, it would be clear right away what happens. Neil Marshall was dead, and, Dr and Dark was lying unconscious. In other words, the jar must have been broken during their struggle. I see. Something that I brought up before is now making me very confused. The thing that suggested that Emma was the one who did it was Emma's name being written on there. But I made a point about just like, how did Neil write the name on there and why would Neil write the name on there? Was Neil so vindictive that, oh, you shoved me and I landed on this, that he grabbed the jar after being knocked into that cupboard and wrote his name on there? And then threw it to break it? <laughs> Can't believe you're uh, starting early while I'm still at work. This is homophobic. This is my day off, Alexei. This is, I start... I start early on these. By the way, welcome to the stream. <laughs> I see. What's the matter, Emma? Everything about this jar doesn't really make sense. Hey, I'm out of energy drink number one. Time to start on energy drink number two. In case you're wondering, I slept for maybe two hours last night. <laughs> so I, I'm having this to stave off me trying to fall asleep during this. The fact that I haven't yawned once, I'm impressed by, honestly. Ah. 
What's the matter, Emma? Apparently the Josh added at the time the crime was committed. But I have a feeling there is more to it than that. There must be a contradiction here somewhere. Anyway, I committed this fabrication completely alone. Now do I suggest that the jar, as far as energy drinks go, I personally always uh, do Red Bull. If I'm having Jägermeister or vodka, sure, but just on their own. I mean, like, I bought this as a one-off. I buy, like, this is a treat for myself every now and then because it's loaded with fucking sugar. Um, it's kind of worse for you than normal energy drinks with how much sugar's in it, but it's very tasty. I go for this purely because it's it has very little sugar. I'm trying my best to lose weight, which is happening. Slowly, but it is happening. I'm trying my best to lose weight, so the zero sugar one, um, I need. Also, I can't have breakfast before I go to work, because I work on my own. Um, like in my shop, I don't work, I don't have other staff members working in my shop at the same time. They'll come down from the shop at the other end of the shopping center, where the boss also owns that shop, and they come down for like, either for me to go to lunch, or for me to go to the bathroom, or if I desperately need help with something, or like new stuff comes in, we're gonna put it up. Um, so I never know how long I'm going to be working on my own for, so I can't go to the bathroom. So I can't really have breakfast before I go to work, otherwise I need to go to the bathroom before they come over, and then it's painful and annoying. So, I take this to work with me, and like half an hour into my shift, I start drinking this. And then by the time I need to go to the bathroom from having this, someone is definitely shown up by that point. <laughs> so, that's my, that's, I have one of those every day. The culprit is the blue badger case closed. Look, if it means that the blue badger will no longer exist, that might be worth it instead of taking down Gam. So, here's my thing. I'm going to present the jar here, because the name's written on the jar. How would you write the name on the jar before it was shattered? Unless, like, they just happened to piece it back together to write it on there. Here's hoping that once you lose weight, that can go jacket. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, that fucking jacket. See, the thing is, when I bought that jacket, I was around 95 kilos. I'm 130 currently. I have a- and it, and it was a little tight on me back then. Um, I have a long way to go before I even want to risk putting that thing on again, so that fucking situation doesn't come up again. Because, my god, that was embarrassing. I mean, it was worth it. <laughs> it makes a funny little end piece to that first video that goes- that's on YouTube. But my god. But my god. Objection. Okay, good. <laughs> Miss Skye, I understand how you feel. You committed that crime two years ago to protect your sister. You mean the forgery at the scene where New Marshall was murdered? That truth were to be exposed now, the past two years of your life will have been in vain. Even so, I am compelled to bring to everyone's attention a significant contradiction within your testimony. A contradiction in my testimony. You testified, and I quote, the pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. That's right. Do you have a problem with that? It's a simple oversight, really. You see, a message was written on this jar with the victim's blood. And like, I know that like... See, the thing is, the sequence of events that we've been determining so far don't quite make sense. Neil's autopsy shows that he died in blood loss in under 10 minutes. He could have had time to write it on there, but also, one, I don't get why he would. I don't get why he would. If he genuinely wrote it on there, he's a vindictive bastard. <laughs> like, he is vindictive. To just be like, oh, in an accident I died because you were trying to help me. Fuck you. But also, like, we came up with the whole theory that, like, we know that it took sight on that place because Emma shoved them into where the jar was and she saw the blue badger. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if he's anything else, his brother, the objective bastard, doesn't seem that far off. True, but I do think about Rawhide Kobayashi, it does kind of make a lot of sense, doesn't it? But, uh, yeah, Genius said the blue badger ended up having such a massive significance in this whole case. It's the biggest stretch in the world. It's the biggest stretch in the world. It's the most absurd shit that is pop- that it, it is- It is more absurd than the parrot. Like, not even fucking exaggerating. 
But also, we know that the that the jar broke when Emma shoved him into there. Because the way that Emma saw it, it was like flying through the air. It would then break. Or I guess a shadow, like, no, because she saw it when there was the stabbing happening. So it was before they were shoved into it. So it was just a really awkward shadow. The I still don't understand how the light source shone on the jar onto the, like, above where they were fighting to make it look like that. I guess if she's on the ground and looking up at it, depending on how it's sitting up there, it would look like that. But also it's sideways compared to- I don't know. Nothing makes sense. Nothing makes sense about it. It's- it's a stretch. It's a fucking stretch. A message was written on this jar of the victim's blood. Yes, the prosecutor must have written it in his final moments. Exactly so. And this is where the contradiction lies. What, you're telling me while he was dying, instead of just writing it on a single individual piece, he pieced them back together to write it? <laughs> In order for the victim to be able to write his message on the jar, it must not yet have been broken before he died. With the room dark and ray flashes to illuminate the um, lighting to illuminate the room, we've certainly determined that she, the thing she saw for a half second made a permanent impression on her. My question is, how did the light flash, and at what angle did the light flash to make that jar, make that shadow, in that position, in that orientation? That's the shit to me that doesn't make sense. Like, seriously, the jar has to be- we determined this before. The jar has to be like... At this- oh, okay, turn it- uh, turn it around, this way. The jar has to be at this angle to do, to make it look like the blue badger, right? Like it has to be like this. That's like that's looking at it from above. That's looking at it from above. It would have taken lightning flashing uh, with the jar uh, in midair. Yes, like it, just, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It must not yet have been broken before he died. Ah. Oh. She's over considered She hasn't considered this for years. <laughs> he couldn't have written Emma's name on a shattered jar. Order, order. It's definitely one hell of a stretch without a doubt. If, so if nothing comes up to explain the positioning of the jar to make this light source, I'm calling bullshit on it. I mean, like, it makes for a ridiculous moment of the blue badger. What the hell? Someone's drawing some shit on some fucking scrap paper to be a, oh my god, it's actually relevant. Like, it is ridiculous, and sure, whatever. But the way they position the picture compared to the crime, to the scene is just like, that doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> order, order. You're on it. It would appear. More information is needed in regard to this jar and its bloody message. We may be missing something critical here. See, I have a theory. I have a theory. Because the whole idea of Emma's name being written on here has been fishy to me from the fucking start. I can picture how it happened in my mind, but it's hard to describe. All I can say is that it makes sense to me. I don't... I don't understand in any fucking capacity how it could make sense. For the light to shine from above the jar, or from the top of the jar, to shine it to above the wall for them. It must mean that the jar was flying before Emma even tackled them. So what the fuck was happening? Something critical. Chief Prosecutor, it seems you're as in the dark as we are. About the truth towards which we're headed. What? Just tell us exactly what you saw. We'll piece it together the information to arrive at the truth. Very well, the witness may continue her testimony. Jaw and message in blood. I immediately noticed the blood traces on the jar, but it was dark in the room and I didn't have time to check it out. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. The fragments were large, so I'm sure I got them all. All I could think about was wiping them clean before they were discovered. so much more evil than I gave him credit for. 
Oh, he is even more evil. Oh, fuck you. You mean you were the one who wiped away the message in blood? I wasn't chief prosecutor at the time. She didn't think Doc was the real murderer. That's why she tried to erase the real evidence. Very well, the defense may now begin its cross-examination. Apparently, to add such a general clue to the quite a mystery franchise, one truth prevails. <laughs> Don't, are you, I'm just gonna go with nine, 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 nine. Something, you got something in your mind. I've got something in my mind that paints a certain someone as being like so fucking evil. Fucking Christ. Notice the blood traces on the jar. So the jar was already broken. Okay, it's closed, actually. Ow. Is that the name of a franchise? I've never heard of this. Should I play it? Add it to the list. It's a miracle that thing hadn't broken earlier. It certainly looks as feeble as the defense's case. Hey! Dude! Not as feeble as the judge's judgment. <laughs> Shit talking to each other. It's an anime manga series, actually. Oh, is it also Detective Conan? Does it have... I've heard of Detective Conan. I don't know what it is. Every time I think of Detective Conan, I just imagine Conan the Barbarian, but with a detective's hat, like, kind of dressed as Sherlock Holmes, but still being Conan the Barbarian. But I don't know anything about Conan the Barbarian. Are they the same thing? Are they the same thing? Detective Conan's Japanese, um, is the Japanese name of the series. It was localized as case closed in the West. Oh, okay. So, okay. I have heard the name Detective Conan before. I'll be honest, I didn't even know that it was an anime manga. I didn't know whether it was that or a game or anything. But I know I've heard the name before. You're an ace detective and never missed a detail. Do you really expect us to believe you didn't investigate what was written on the jar pieces? Turn my Baron and kind of detective are not the same. Yes, but imagine how funny it would be to imagine that. <laughs> Normally I would have. It was dark in the room and I didn't have time to check it out. So you didn't know your sister's name was written on the jar? No. If I had known, I would have gathered all the pieces and ground them to dust. <laughs> it, has, it has over 1,000 plus chapters still going. All right, scratch it off the list. I refuse to engage with media that takes that long to finish. Unless it's a video game series, because I enjoy video games more than like anime, manga, TV, shows, movies. <laughs> well, that helps my case. Anna, you do that for me? Seems you two might make up yet. <laughs> anyway, I just barely had enough time to move the body as it was. If someone happened upon it, seeing you lose your chance to erase the evidence. You must have been in a hurry. I was. I knew I had to destroy the evidence before anyone came. This is a rather shocking. Right the way the oh whoa 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 whoa. Right the way the blood. I'm afraid this action of yours reveals what actually happened. What do you mean? You really thought Doc killed Prosecutor Marshall. You wouldn't have wiped away the blood. What else could I have done in that situation? Mona. I only had a few moments. There wasn't enough time for me to do anything else but gather up the pieces. So I got frustrated that, well, the series, honestly, the individual mysteries are really neat, but I feel like the series called the folk, um, because I focus on the mystery of the week format that never actually progressed the main, uh, plot. If you don't worry about the main plot, though, and just enjoy every, uh, mystery individually, it's a great time. I mean, hashtag how people talk, th um, in this game about Steel Samurai. Where's Gant right now? Um, he's fucking the district attorney in the ass. I, I might be paraphrasing, but from memory, that's what he said. My memory is really bad, so I may have forgotten. I may have forgotten the exact details. He might have said something else, but I don't know. But I think that's what he was saying. In any, in any way, he's some form of inside the district zone. He invoked a right to not testify because he's chief of police and bounced. We don't have to spill it. He said, I don't want her and fucked off. And then got his fuck on, if you know what I mean. I mean, he got his fuck on. I don't think that that's not even an innuendo. That's that's just a statement. Um, Brian's a large size show. I've got them all. He said he's having lunch with the district attorney. Actually, yeah, because he eaten that booty like it's a like it's a five star dinner. <laughs> 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 uh, 
But how could you see with the power out? It should have been pitch black in that office. The detective is always prepared, Mr. Wright. Even now, I always carry a pocket light and a camera with me. Even I carry a, bo a, body a bottle of emergency luminol wherever I go. I'll, I'll, I'll say this, Emma, Emma. I do appreciate how much you've become science teenager because you actually have emergency luminol with you. Valid point. Yeah, I told you. I never miss anything. I got every last piece. We well, you know that's not true. All I can think about was wiping or armed them clean before they were discovered. So you illegally rearranged the crime scene. Yes, I don't have any excuse for my actions. I'm so sorry, Lana, I didn't know. I've treated you so badly all this time. It's not too late. There's still plenty of time to make up. After we've gotten to the bottom of this incident, I think we just determined that the bottom's the district attorney from memory. No doubt this day will leave a permanent stain on the history of the prosecutor's office. More contradictions have surfaced in our testimony. So this is really putting up a fight. She must really care about you. Still, she's not doing this the right way. I think I finally figured out the contradictions in her testimony. It's so one final possibility that might turn everything around. No, I know what to point out. I just... Do I just use this again? I feel like I just use this again. I do. I just keep using this. Miss Sky, I believe this jar conceals a truth even you were unaware of. What? We found the final piece in, um, of this jar in the chief's office. I'm just now noticing that the lines that are written on this piece here actually make way more sense with what's written on there. When the when the jars piece together, those details disappear, but you can clearly see the beginning of the E and the M on this. But when the jars like all piece together, it it makes that less obvious. Cuz I when I saw that, I'm just like something's written on there. That that's not fucking blood splatter like the rest of it. That's fucking letters. But when it's all pieced together like that, like the line for the M is still there. Well, considering Gans hate is difficult to save his equipment as any good. Viagra exists. Also, how old is how old is Gant actually? 64 Damn, okay, dude's a lot older than I thought he was. Eh, Viagra still exists. We found the final piece of this jar in Chief Gant's safe. In the Chief's safe. But how? Again, it seems like I managed to catch the finale for this game live. Sup, fish! We are like barreling towards taking down the chief of police. It's exciting. Welcome to this room. I knew it. She really didn't know. There's something even more disturbing about that final piece. There was still blood on it. Like, not even to speckles, but like streaks of it. But the witness just testified that she gave it every last piece and wiped the blood off them. And wiped the blood off them. Hell yeah, fuck the police. I should have worn my A-cap shirt for this. Eh, this is my signature thing. I don't have the signature undershirt yet because I haven't fucking made it. But, um, eh, signature jacket. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Yes, which leaves us with only one explanation. On the night prosecutor, Marshall was murdered. You were not the first one to show up on the scene. Chief Gant got there before you. But couldn't the defendant simply miss a piece? I'm afraid that's unlikely. The pieces are too big for anyone to miss, let alone an ace detective. If she went to all this effort to cover up something, she thinks she would have just missed it? <laughs> that may well be, but everyone makes mistakes. Even I once wasted an entire day looking for my dentures. They were in my mouth all along. Huh, can you believe that? That has nothing to do with anything, Judge. <laughs> have you forgotten, Your Honor? Uh, seemingly, if he forgot that he's wearing his dentures, he forgets things very easily, yes. When this witness arrived at the scene, the jaw was already broken. Oh, that. There's no way a name could have been written on a shattered jar. Another person discovered the scene prior to the witness. I hope you're not implying this person was Chief Gantz. At the time, he was looking for dark dance. Oh, God, I... Ah! The way I'm pressing the buttons that I give accidentally skipping dialogue, I'm sorry. Like, I'm accidentally double tapping shit. I'm sorry. The question is, if he did arrive there first, why did he hide that fact for two years? 
But he said he was dark was looking downstairs. Well, Your Honor, can you answer us that? <laughs> Questioning the judge now. No! No! I was about to say, are we gonna get a damaged animation for the fucking judge? <laughs> judge breakdown. Wait, I'm not the one on trial here. <laughs> I was about to say, I'm so looking forward to that. Damon Gann arrived at the crime scene prior to the witness. He proceeded to break the jar and purposely hid one of the broken pieces. Question, what is this action called? Fabrication of evidence. But why would Chief Gann do that? In light of what happened afterwards, isn't it clear? What happened afterwards? Discovering the scene, Lana Sky believed her sister Emma killed the victim. Determined to help her sister, she sought Gant's aid. Lending her aid, Gant helped her create evidence that incriminated Dark, sparing Emma. And therein lies the reason. The reason why Miss Sky became the chief's puppet. Just find a thumb. No, I, I did it on my own. Please, sis, stop trying to protect the chief. I... I can't watch you suffer anymore for my sake. No, you didn't. It wasn't you, Emma. You didn't kill anyone. Don't believe anything Mr. Wright says. The vent attorneys make up those foul lies to defend their clients, says the prosecutor. We forged evidence. Foul lies? Imagine that coming from my own clients. I guess you do seem like the type to, um, who likes to twist the truth. What? What? Fuck you, Judge. Wait a minute. What if... Oh shit, Phoenix is realizing. Oh fuck, Phoenix is realizing. We're still smack dab in the middle of Gant's trap. There's something wrong, Mr. Wright. Lana. Maybe right after all. Oh fucking Christ, Gant. Fuck you, Gant. Fuck you so much. What do you mean, Wright? So you do tell foul lies then, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Miss Skye, please testify once more. But if evidence was fabricated behind your back, then Emma's accident or killing a prosecutor marshal might also be a lie. But, but I do remember knocking over Mr. Marshall. Phoenix didn't, uh, didn't even dignify that with a response. It's just like, Emma, please. Miss Sky, if you will. I I can't. There is nothing to be afraid of anymore. Come on, Lana. We have a situation to both free your sister and to take down this fucking piece of shit. This cross-examination may not change a thing. However, there is a possibility that it will. If you tell the truth. Very well. I'll testify. About what I really saw. She's now realizing we actually have a chance to free her sister. So she's like, alright. If you're confident you can do this, let's fucking do this. Alright, the witness may testify once more. For the final time. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Fuck me, Gant is so evil. Christ, on that fucking shit piss. My god. When I arrived, I found Mr. Marshall's body impaled on that suit of armor's sword. Emma and Dark were lying unconscious on the floor nearby. When I saw what had happened, I thought, she did it. That's why I erased all the evidence that linked, me linked her to the murder. I had Chief Gant help me remove the body from the sword and carry it. But if it all really was a fabrication, Emma might be innocent. Save at the end of this testimony. Will do! <laughs> Unbelievable! The body was impaled on the sword's armor. Armor's sword. Sorry, the other way around. You were the only one who saw that. If only you had proof. Actually, I do have proof. We never did spray luminol on the thing to, to on the armor to see if there was blood on it. If there is, that would be pretty good proof. I gave it to Mr. Wright just this morning. Uh, uh, 
You've given me a lot of things today, actually. Uh, in which one of these things did you hide something? What? It's a picture I took of the crime scene as I encountered it. Wait, wait, you have a photo? You have a photo! You have a photo! Wait, what? What? I thought it might be needed. I don't remember receiving a picture like that. Lana must have known. See, Mr. Wright, she really does have faith in you. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please present this picture. I don't remember receiving any pictures from Lana. Lana said she gave it to you this morning, right? I seem to remember getting something from her then. Let's check that evidence again. There must be a picture in there somewhere. No, that's not the thing. Was this today- was this today's trial or yesterday's tr uh, trial? I actually don't remember. Yesterday. This was yesterday, so it is this one. The incident files were yesterday. Okay. So it is this one? <gasps> there we go! You know it's this one because we actually- when we- when we look at it, it actually- oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Sorry. What have I done? What have I done? Sorry. There we go. <laughs> They've got a copyright symbol on the back? <gasps> Gasp! Hey, there's a picture here! Ayo! Ayo! Oh, this fucking asshole. Oh, this fucking piece of shit. Oh my. This is the actual crime scene. We're, we're looking at a dead body. I've been from the back, just like a traditional American book. No other detective saw the crime scene like this. Because I contacted criminal affairs only after I had rearranged everything. Oh my god, we're somehow adding even more evidence to our fucking court record. Is it right? That piece cut it from the vest. Could that be the cloth we found inside Chief Gant's safe? It is. What's this? Handprint, isn't it? It is. That cloth. It had fingerprints on it. Does it have fingerprints on those? I must be the real murderer. What? Those fingerprints are yours. They're yours, Emma. Why are your lips turning all purple, Mr. Wright? <laughs> anyway, let's get on with the cross-examination. So long as you tell the truth, we should be able to flush out the real murderer. Very well, the defense may now begin its cross-examination. Actual crime scene. Okay, before you, do before you discuss it, Wait, what? Gan, what the fuck? Wait, what? Wait, what? 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 Okay, I just want to check this out, man. Looks like everyone takes my girl tonight, so considering he finished so quickly. Ah, <laughs> oh, okay, now I want to look at this. I guess that's of that. Uh, is this one I was saving? No, I'm gonna save anyway. I might as well. I might as well. Come now, OG! Save now, okay. This is the Parex excuse for a trial I've ever seen. Chief Gen! What, well, now you want to make me out as the bad guy too? <laughs> and so I'd like to put in a word or two in my defense. I thought you couldn't. I'm afraid it's too late for that. Non-stop infinite saving. I'm afraid it's too late for that. What? You already declined to testify. That means you forfeited your right to make statements of any sort. This must be that risk we were talking about earlier. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the sound of the noose tightening around your own neck. God damn, Edgeworth. God damn, Edgeworth. 
Cock! <laughs> oh, so what? Do you think I'm worried? Sorry to disappoint you, but I don't need to make any statements. I just not here to fuck about this asshole. Just like I'm, I'm excited to watch you fucking die, asshole. God damn it, dude. What do you mean? The evidence will do all the talking for me. Even if I can't testify, I can still present evidence. I guess he is a cop. Cops are allowed to present evidence. It's literally in the evidence law book that we have. Yes, that's true. Wait, you mean... You still have some conclusive evidence? No, I don't! But someone does. Someone. So, what's your excuse, all right, though? What are you doing, asshole? I'm not gonna fool you, shit. Why have you been keeping quiet about it? You do have something to show us, all right? Something that proves who knocked, uh, knocked over Neil Marshall, causing his death. Conclusive evidence that leaves no room for doubt. Is this true, Mr. Wright? If I show that piece of evidence now. No, I need to make more points before I can show it. And it's sure to be made out as the murderer. Mr. Wright, if you have any more evidence presented now, and if you try to conceal anything, you will be one um the one appearing before the Board of Inquiries. I do now. Better think this through carefully. Can't afford to make the wrong decision. Should I present that piece of evidence? The one that shows who really killed Prosecutor Marshall? Handprint, yeah. Someone left behind the, uh, an oil stain on the, on the fabric. Must have had a really oily hand. That's all right, think about it scientifically, huh? A more likely explanation is, person slipped um and fell into a freshly waxed floor. Getting waxed all over their hands. Well, that would account for the amount of oil, I guess. I feel so scientific about it, though. It happens, you know, I always slip on the floors <laughs> at school after they're waxed. <laughs> Rules for submitting evidence. No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Rule 2. Unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. Since there's still a hammering left, I assume that nothing about that has changed um, ever since Neil was killed, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, no, it's been, no I have a... Th no, because I know what we're doing here. I'm just trying to work out what to do. Because I can't show it now. I can't show it now. But it's just... Lana made a specific point about this. No, I'm not showing it. I'm not showing it. I'm not showing it. I don't know what our plan is if we don't, but I have ideas. Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. What? You lie! Chief Gen! Yo, you opened my safe! I know what, you're t <laughs> what was inside! The conclusive evidence! I don't know what you're talking about. Mr. Wright, why don't you show them? Hold on, Emma. Hold on. Hold on. We found it together! Oh, I say it's because you know the truth, don't you? You know whose fingerprints are on it. That's why you won't present it. 
What are you talking about, Chief Gan? Can't you figure it out? Take a good look at this picture. Say the victim's vest, but notice anything odd about the chest area. It looks like part of it's been cut out for some reason. You mean you had this in your safe? What? That means you, the chief of police, have been concealing evidence. This is going to be the, the biggest scandal in the history of the police department. Impressive. To be honest, I didn't think you had the gall the right -o. Well, I can't just let you pin me up as the murderer. <laughs> I'll tell you what really happened. You don't have the right to testify. What? You mean, you admit to it? Oh, fucking, fucking idiot. Oh my god, we got him. I was the first person to arrive at the crime scene that day. And then it got to me that I could use the situation to control Lana. Oh my god. Oh my god, we fucking got him. <laughs> oh, we got him. So you really were manipulating her? I knew Lana. If I made it look like the blame lay with her sister, that's when she saw the scene. She would ask me for my aid. So you assisted Miss Skye? I told her to arrange all the evidence. I had her plant the knife over the victim's body and move the body across the room. And I ended up using that evidence to get Joe Dark convicted. When I tampered with the crime scene, I had two pieces of evidence. This was before Lana arrived at the scene, mind you. Two pieces of evidence. You mean those items in your safe? But why? For insurance, of course. Insurance? I was sure my plan would work, but it's always best to be prepared for the worst. Again, openly, brazenly admitting corruption. He just doesn't give a fuck. I'm untouchable, I don't care. I wasn't about to let anyone blame me for a murder that that girl committed. You mean you were calculating that far ahead while forging the evidence? What do you take me for, a fool? I didn't make my least chief by dumb luck. See this jaw fragment? I had the most legible part of him as name. I didn't expect Lana to go and wipe the blood off all the pieces. But if you fabricated all the evidence, what's to say you didn't fabricate the message on this jar too? Ho ho ho! Some people just don't know when to quit, do they? That's why I kept one more item for insurance. See, here's my question. Is, is Gand allowed to say what he's saying right now? I mean, I guess it, we're not cross-examining him, so it's technically not a testimony, but it fucking feels like a testimony. <laughs> you mean that piece of cloth. Come now, Raito, cough it up already. I know you'll have it. What are you waiting for, Mr. Wright? So you admit to it then, Chief Gant. That you were hiding the cloth you cut off the victim's vest in your safe. Yes, I admit it. I don't want to have to do that. Um, do that being cheap at all. But it's a lot better than being portrayed as a murderer. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say for yourself? Just a moment ago, you said you didn't have any evidence you could present. Foolish move, right -o. You should have shown up then before it was too late. It's been a long time. But the moment of truth is finally right. As long as I don't mess this up here, victory is mine. Messes up. Your Honor, I do have evidence to present now. All right, then, let's see this conclusive evidence. The evidence that shows you actually murdered Prosecutor Marshall. 
No, I think I fucked up. I think I meant to say no. No, because I haven't changed anything about what my plan is. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Come on, Mr. Wright. You remember that thing um, with the murderer's handprint on it, don't you? There's no way around it, Mr. Wright. Let's try this one more time. Okay, so I can't get out of- I can't get out of showing evidence. I can't get out of showing evidence. Okay. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of the victim's vest. Oh yes, <laughs> at last you finally brought it out into the open. There's a handprint on this piece of cloth. Your Honor, the prosecution requests that the, um, that be immediately sent to the lab for analysis. This handprint on the leather, there must have been a strong impact for it to be left so clearly. You mean, it could not have been forged. It must be authentic, conclusive evidence. Oh, sorry, there's Edgeworth. It must, it could not have been forged. It must be authentic, conclusive evidence. Ho ho ho! You're as slow on the uptake as ever, were they? What? Think about it. Raito had, um, had all this time to present this evidence. Yet he was reluctant to do so. Why would that be? You mean you already know? You know whose fingerprints are on that. Mr. Wright, do you really know? Where the fingerprints belong to must be the real murderer. Whose fingerprints are they? Very well. I'll tell you. I feel like we've gone about this in the wrong order of events. I feel like we're still gonna fuck up. Should be okay now. Everything's proceeding as predicted. I hope you're right, Phoenix. Emma Sky! What? They're mine? I'm sorry, Emma. But why? Why didn't you tell me? It's proof she didn't do that. Oh ho ho ho! You're really something, Raito. You knew this girl did You know this girl did it all along, and you still tried to pin the murder on me. So if you had presented immediately, Emma would have been pinned for the crime, we would have gotten a unique game over for her. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that was my thought process. No, that's not when we do this, yeah. So it's true. Tragic, but true. This girl really did shove Prosecutor Marshall to his death. How could you? You're your monster! This guy. You knew his fingerprints those were all along, and yet you... You acted like she really didn't... No. Miss Sky, it's not over just yet. What? I said this trial isn't over yet. Ha! But I'm afraid it is over, boy. Not only this trial, but your career, too. Fuck you. You purposely concealed this conclusive evidence. That, my friend, is a serious offense. I'm looking forward to pressing charges after the defendant is convicted. I'll have your badge, boy! What's the matter? Cat's got your tongue? Did I conceal any evidence in any capacity? Aren't you gonna tell us how it feels? How it feels to be the one who single-handedly turned a poor little girl into a murderer? Before I do that, there's just one little thing I have to clear up. Oh, and what's that? Who really killed Prosecutor Neil Marshall? What? Chief Gant. You are absolutely right. This piece of cloth proves who the real murderer is. Who killed Neil Marshall, you ask? It was Emma Sky, wasn't it? Nope. I'm afraid that's not possible. You see, this piece of cloth contains a critical contradiction. What a contradiction? What is this fool babbling about? I'm talking about a contradiction. One that proves who the real killer is. 
the minute Mr. Right, this piece of club, what could it possibly contradict? Chief, again, your tyrannical reign ends here. Behold the piece of evidence that contradicts this cloth. Thank you, Lana. And what ex and what exactly is that supposed to be? This is the picture Miss Sky took. Take a good look at it. See where the piece of vest was cut out? Yes, you should have shown it to me. It's hard to make out with all the blood in his vest, though. Exactly my point. His chest is soaked with blood. That's only natural. His lungs no doubt were punctured. Blood poured out of his mouth. Oh! But that piece of cloth! Doesn't have blood on it. And where it's been cut out behind where it would have been. Does. Wait! There's no blood on it! Ah! Since Emma Sky's fingerprints are on this cloth, there's no doubt that she shoved the prosecutor aside. However, Mr. Marshall was not impaled on the sword at that time. Yeah! Fuck you, bitch! <laughs> no, this is nonsense! <laughs> now then, Chief Gant, let me ask you something. Prosecutor Marshall was not impaled when he was shoved aside. He most likely hit his head on the ground and was knocked out. If so, then tell me, who could it have been? Who could have arrived at the scene before Miss Lana Sky picked up the unconscious prosecutor and impaled him on the armor's sword? <sighs> then, to make it look like Emma was responsible for the prosecutor's death, said person proceeded to write her name on the jar with the victim's blood. A jar that they then broke on purpose to leave behind a clue and make Lana believe her sister did it. Remember what you admitted only moments ago? That you personally cut out this bloodless piece of victim's vest? Ironic, isn't it? The, through the very act of creating insurance, you prove that you were the actual murderer. No! It's finally all over. Ha! <laughs> what, bitch? Oh, ho, 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 ho! That was close, or I know you almost had me. <laughs> Sorry, but you laughed out all better than that. I revealed your allegations. What do you mean you refute these allegations? You say that piece of cloth is a legal evidence. Order, order! What nonsense is this? Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a suspect. <laughs> Remember, Aji? Earlier, all the writer here concealed that piece of cloth. Yeah, we hit it until he fucking admitted that he showed up first. Well, that's true. The defense did refuse to present evidence. Out of that moment, that piece of cloth Seems to be legal evidence. That's unfair. Ho ho ho! Did you actually think you could best me in court? <laughs> it looks like the last laugh's on you, son. I'm afraid Mr. Gant's claim is legally correct. Well, Mr. Edgeworth? True. Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a person. Assuming, of course, that the evidence is indeed illegal. Hmm, very well, Mr. Wright. Seems at last. The time for me to reveal my plan has finally arrived. Mr. Wright, do you admit to it? That you purposely and illegally concealed this piece of cloth? No. I didn't conceal anything. I admit I refused to present it at one point. Aha! So the evidence is illegal! No, I wasn't allowed to at the time. <laughs> no, it isn't, Mr. Gant. Ha! Huh? It's not that I didn't present evidence then. It's that I couldn't. What do you mean you couldn't? 
There are certain procedures involved when presenting evidence. Uh, no, Ajay, don't listen to his lies. <laughs> He's nothing but a coward. You can't really believe. <laughs> there is only one issue left to be resolved in this trial. Is this evidence legal or not? Very well. Very well. Let us settle this once and for all. Earlier you refused to present evidence. If you can prove you con your conduct is not in violation of the law, then do so now. I can. I can. This is my proof, Your Honor. Evidence law. What's this? I've done my homework too, Chief. Indeed, Emma Sky's fingerprints were on this piece of cloth. However, at that point in time, this was merely a piece of cloth. Nothing more. What? You see, it's written right here in this book. The second rule of evidence law. Ah. <laughs> rule number one. No evidence shall be shown without approval of the police department. I found this piece of evidence myself inside your safe. It goes without saying, I did not have approval from the, the police department. I kind of stole it from you. Rule number two, unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. And here is the crux of the matter. You see, at the time it was impossible for me to prove the relevance between the cloth and the SL9 incident. What? What kind of nonsense is this? Because at that point, you had it admitted that it had been cut out. <laughs> you want the relevancy? Just take one look at this picture and... Sorry, but can, can you recall, when was that picture presented? That was shown only a few moments ago. No! He's right. At the beginning of today's trial, that piece of cloth was still meaningless person who gave it value as evidence was you, Damon Gant. <laughs> you admitted to cutting it out before, what was it? What was it? It was just fucking nothing, dumbass. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Fuck you, asshole. This is what you fucking get. You think you can beat a fucking lawyer at this law shit? Fuck you. Totally didn't hit my phone's charging cable. <laughs> you yourself confessed to a certain truth. Verify this once more. You cut out cloth. <laughs> yes, I was the one who personally did it. <laughs> no! It was then that you approved this cloth as conclusive evidence. <laughs> yes, you, the chief of police, personally approved this cloth. <laughs> the only person who could have cut this from the victim's vest is the one who stood before Prosecutor Marshall in his final moments. In other words, the real murderer. And there's only one person who that could be. Damon Gant! The killer was you! <laughs> oh my god, we have cornered this bitch so fucking effectively. Holy shit! Holy fucking shit! My god! Mm. Um. <laughs> Thanks, Deku, for the cheer and the collapse. <laughs> I knew I should have gotten rid of him. That good for nothing scum. For two years, he's been snooping around the department trying to get something on me. <laughs> <laughs> Catch him all the road to hanging himself with him, watch him fucking do it. <laughs> we used his- we used the fact that he is so corrupt and so blatantly and willing to be openly corrupt and not give a fuck to just fully and openly admit himself to all the shit he's been doing. Ah, oh, God. <laughs> Holy fuck, man. Crimes are being committed every day, yet he insisted on hounding me. Well, your crime wasn't exactly petty. He wanted to reinvestigate the case. He recruited Angel Star, then convinced Bruce Goodman. Detective Goodman. Yeah, that's right. If the evidence transferred, I'll lose my only truth to find out the truth. Chance to find out the truth. Please, you gotta help me. Goodman turned him down, as he ought to. Still, 
Rawhide Kobayashi didn't know when to quit. He sold his ID card and tried to take the evidence. Goodman came to me that day. He wanted to file a lost item report. I went with him to the evidence room. Then all of a sudden he decided to speak out. What are you talking about, Goodman? I don't have a voice for Goodman. He's had not talked this entire time. He'll go he'll be the noir detective. He's dressed more like one. Can you please reopen the investigation, Chief? We can't transfer the evidence out. There are too many questions left unanswered. He opened his evidence locker, and as he was taking the evidence out, he said, It's not too late. I'm gonna hand this all over to Marshall. Kobayashi. Boy, I sure do love being alive. Yeah, it would really suck if I was murdered because, boy, living is pretty sick. Well, to be honest, I was a, a bit taken aback by his words. I had a bad feeling when he came to see me, but I never thought he'd bring up SL9. That's when I saw it, but that's how Cars had denied. I'm glad that he's admitting to all of this because while we can still prove he was the one who did it there, because the bloodstain didn't have a fingerprint on it and the fucker wears gloves, I'm glad he's admitting it. <laughs> I'm glad he's admitting it. I go ahead and just pull it out. Doing so would have only uh, led to more blood, making it near impossible to hide your crime. Even so, the blood was just pouring out. I didn't know who might stumble in, so I hurried to wipe it up. I was worrying so much about the floor, I didn't realize my fatal mistake. The bloody handprints. Hey, it finally comes up on Detective Chinchilla's lockup. I used to be known as the Crime Computer, but everyone has to start somewhere, I guess. I was too nervous. I had no business doing any of it. Then you put his body in my car. I'm sorry, I couldn't think of any other way to move the body. You also seemed to not like Edgeworth, and was just like, I'll frame him for murder. You just didn't expect Star to actually catch Lana in the act. I broke your trunk, but what's the big deal? You'll make a lot more than us detectives ever will. <laughs> Leaving the prosecution cars aside, how? How could you get Miss Sky involved in all this? Well, she had as much to lose as I did if the trophy came out. So you took the evidence from Detective Goodman's locker. I felt bad for having to do it. I also didn't have the time to pick and choose what to take. So that's why the glove got stuck in there. You left the jar fragments in the glove. Yeah. It looks like I was better off being an investigator of crimes than a committal. <laughs> They all did their best to get in my way. I've got to hand it to them. They, um, they do their jobs well, much to my dismay. Seeing this shockingly in stride. Yeah, now that we've got him cornered, he's just kind of admitting it all. I mean, at this point, I think he realizes he's fucked no matter what. Fake evidence doesn't hold up very well upon close examination. You must have known that. Tell me why they. Why do you stand in court? Me. You despise criminals. I can feel it, you and me. We're the same. Oh, fuck you. No, you fucking not. One day you'll understand. Oh, believe me, you will. You're just one man. You'll see what it really takes to bring him down once you try to go it alone. Dude, you're a criminal. You murdered someone. You murdered two people, actually. Like, to get the to get the criminals, I need to I need to murder two different detectives. No, bitch, you did that for your own fucking benefit. Go fuck yourself. There, in no capacity, was murdering Marshall had anything to do with putting away Joe Dark. And murdering Goodman had nothing to do with anything other than protecting your own sorry ass. Well, looks like it's time to say goodbye. Oh, what, Jay? What? Looks like we'll have to cancel that lunch date. Sorry, old friend. Fuck you, he's thinking. 
I'm sorry too, Dame. I'm sorry. I'm sorry too, Dame Dad. Judge and Edgeworth voices are too similar. It's kind of a problem. I knew, um, I knew it was used, um, as it used to be long ago. You were once a fine investigator, an example to others on the force. I'm sorry to learn that you are no longer that person. Those days are gone now, Jay. Thanks for all the memories, though. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Now that you have Raito here, and worthy, with these two around, you can't go wrong. In fact, I can hear them already. The melodious sound of a new beginning. <laughs> He's admitting that we're pretty fucking good at this shit. That me and Edgeworth make a really fucking good team when we're working together to uncover a truth. We're like, really good at this shit. <laughs> there are two things I want you to understand. Yes. <laughs> Little on the, no uh, the nose writing aside, knowing this was added after the third game come out. <laughs> I can hear it now how good these two will be forever. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yes. First, your sister never hurt anyone. Well, she shoved someone. I don't really hurt them much. Second, Damon Gam betrayed you from the beginning. You see, Miss Sky, you no longer have any reason to keep silent. You're right. When this trial is over, I'll tell everything. All that I've done these past two years. From the time I had Gan help me forge evidence up until today. So... It seems all the questions raised in this trial have been answered. The many, 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 many questions. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Sky. I couldn't get you out of all your trouble. No, she's still very much like... Tried to hide a body and hide evidence and shit like that. I mean, she's not going away for murder. But she's not escaping prison. <laughs> My, my, what high standards you have for a rookie. <laughs> hey, it's my fifth guy, shut up. I know I know, I might be a rookie, but like, come on. Hey. <laughs> I can see why Mia thought so highly of you. Ah, uh, yes, the person that you were in lesbians with. Who knows, a few years from now, you just might make it to the top. Also a little on the nose, knowing that this was written after the next two games. A oh, smile! An actual honest to god fucking smile from Lana. Oh my god. I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. Miss Sky. And to you too, Mr. Wright. You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. Believe me, I know how much of an ordeal it's been for you. <clears throat> it was nothing. I only had my entire life turned upside down. It's fine. <laughs> I was worried the pressure might break you. And yet, you rose above it all and guided Mr. Wright to victory. It is almost as if you could say you rose from the ashes. You've done well, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> Stop it, I only did my job. Barker. In light of this case, it seems as um, a good self-examining is in order for us all. Yeah... Yeah, even though, like, we succeeded and we took down the chief of police, this case has kind of, like, fucking traumatized and ruined all of us. Like, no one's getting out of this unscathed. Like, sure, we won in, like, getting the, the, the true culprit, like, taken out and everything, but, like, fucking hell. Um, <laughs> fucking hell. This guy... Yes, Your Honor. You are innocent of murder. However, I mean, at least a traumatized teenager is maybe slightly less traumatized now. I mean, her sister's still gonna prison. She just has, like, she has closure. But, like, that's what we've all got. But, like, her sister's still gonna prison. Like, her life is- and she didn't kill anyone! Also true. To be fair, she didn't come into this thinking that. But like, just as like, she's turning around with her sister and it's just like, oh, everything you've done has been to protect me. Like, any of like, the- like, the badness that we've had between each other, like, can finally be mended. Oh, you're going to prison now! Sorry! 
Although the chief blackmailed you, the fact that you still acted as his accomplice. A trial will be scheduled for these crimes at a later date. It's always the first step towards recovery. The truth? Yes. Yes, I understand, Your Honor. Is there something amusing about all of this? Why are you smiling? It's been a long time, Your Honor. A long time since I felt free of these heavy chains. Face God rise from the ashes for a reason after all. Well, this trial has gone on far too long already. You can say that again, Judge. You can say that again. Regarding the charge of murder, this court finds an offendant, Miss Lot Sky. Not guilty! Just guilty of everything else. Courtroom confetti for everyone. One last gavel strike for the LP. That is all. This court is adjourned. Who oh boy! Who oh boy! Who oh boy! At long last, it's finally over. Hell of a battle. I mean, like, I came into this case. I came into this case saying the last case felt like a really good ending for the game. Even if this case is good, it needs to justify itself as the actual end of the game instead of the last one. And I will say it has done its job at that. It is weird that Maya's like not here for it, but also like Maya's arc is finished and she's gone off somewhere to come back at some point. So it makes sense to introduce new characters for this. But, like, as a resolution to the characters, like, arcs and stuff, for specifically Phoenix and Edgeworth, yes, this somehow has managed to come around and also feel like a fitting ending to the game, even after how much of the last case felt like a fitting ending to the game. This is just, like, expanded on the themes and, like, the arcs that the characters had for that. <laughs> in terms of just like turning their entire fucking world's view on its fucking head and just being like re-examine everything yeah you've now dealt with like all of this bullshit but now you need to like reckon with the consequences of it though <laughs> instead of Maya we have copyright friendly Maya <laughs> I mean she's even got the little bun on the top of her head too Emma? <laughs> Why the long face? Ah, uh, my sister's still going to prison. I'm sorry, your sister didn't get completely off the hook. But at least she wasn't convicted for a murder she didn't commit. She won't die. <laughs> She's not going to be killed. There's at least that. No, that's not it. Just now, after the trial ended. You see why Mia Faithful thought so highly of you. I owe you my thanks, Mr. Ray. And you too, Mr. Ray. Suffered as much as I have. This game has a lot of flashbacks to things that happened like four seconds ago. Like, it happens a lot. You know, I did my best too, but Lana didn't say a single word to me. Uh, she did, she kind of did, did she? Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, she kind of did not say anything, did you? Did she? I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Hey, Chinchilla. Deus Dex Chinchilla. What have you brought this time around? Oh, yes I am. I'll come back later then. Chinchilla, way detective. What is it? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. You know that's on purpose, aren't you? <laughs> Making a detective run around while on duty. And it's up and off. You call me here. I've seen that people happy at funerals. Yes, 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 yes. Say your spiel, yes. Hey, lighten up, pals. I'm only kidding. Oh, are you here because of my sister again? No, nope. not this time. I came today because of you, pal. Me? That's right. <laughs> I thought you'd like to say someone. Hey! She's not immediately being put in police custody before her next trial. Thank you. I mean, you're not even a detective. I don't even know why you're the one who has her, who has her with you. <laughs> I mean, I guess if like, 
I guess if the corrupt chief of police says you're not a detective anymore, getting back to becoming a detective probably won't be the hardest thing in the world. Lana! <laughs> Should you be doing this? She's still under arrest, you know. Well, I won't tell if you won't. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Emma, I owe you an apology. It's okay, sis. Don't worry about it. That day, two years ago. It was the first time in my life I ever panicked. It was all I could do to keep myself from screaming. All I could think about was keeping you from getting wrapped up in that mess. Sis. I asked again to help me cover up the truth. I thought I was doing it for your sake. But now I realize I was wrong. I changed after that day. I had to. It was the only way I could make it through the past two years. I knew how much I was hurting you by distancing myself. But I couldn't bring myself to tell you what I did. I... I was scared. Scared that you'd look at me with those eyes of yours. I was scared of how you'd react if you knew. But sis, you're only doing it for me. No. Huh? I turned my back on you that day. In hiding what I believed to be the truth, I was deceiving you. Sis. I'm such a fool. It took me all this time to realize it. Emma, I'm so sorry. But sis, you don't have to apologize. I'm happy now. You're happy? Of course! You know, sis, I always knew that one day you'd come back, <laughs> and now you have! Ah, smile. Oh, Emma, Emma. Ah. 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 No one can change the past. The only thing we can do is strive to make up for our mistakes. Why must we make up for our mistakes, you ask? Because in doing so, we can find the way back to our rightful path. And it is from there that we can move on toward a brighter future. It is almost like, in doing this, we can rise from the ashes! <laughs> At least that's what I felt, watching the two sisters make up. Hey. Mr. Wright, Mr. Chinchilla, M me Thank you both for all that you've done. I'm sure we'll meet again someday. Isn't that right, Edgeworth? The Edgeworth? Stop hiding and come over here. Oh no, no, he's got the forward facing. Where was he hiding? <laughs> I imagine he's just like tucked under the couch or something. I just came to say, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> right. Well, I I I'll be going now. No, Edgeworth, come back. Mr. Edgeworth, I hope you don't blame yourself for what happens. <laughs> we were the ones who acted corruptly, not you. <sighs> it's too late for me. He's such a fucking dog. He really is. No matter what anyone may say, I realize today that I can't correct my mistakes. Mr. Edgeworth. Not only that, but I don't even trust myself anymore. Chief Gant was right. I mean, honestly, one of the people who's gotten out of this case the worst is Edgeworth. Which is impressive considering how bad he was fucked up in the last one. And this one may actually be worse for him. He doesn't get closure for this! He at least got closure in the last one. In this one, no. His entire world's been, like, turned on its head. Like, everything that, like... Ugh. One day you will be cor as corrupt as I am. I do despise criminals. I plan to dedicate my entire life to fighting them. But in order to fight crime on my own, I'd need a weapon. It 
it's scary. But I've known that to be true for quite some time now. But Edgeworth... Who knows? Given enough time, I might have tried to pull something like Chief Gant did. This whole game's an existential crisis for Edgeworth. <laughs> Sup, Wynn? Welcome to the stream. First time chat from viewer. Yeah, I mean, like... Again, what Edgeworth is saying here... If Phoenix didn't come along and do the cases the way that he did them... Yes, Edgeworth would have gotten to the point where he went down this path. He hadn't by the time we started this. Again, we started hearing that Edgeworth was like this prosecutor who like would do anything to get a conviction and everything like that. But every case we personally did against him, he never forged evidence. Like, we thought that the autopsy was forged, but it wasn't. It was just updated. So, but you definitely get the impression that Edgeworth from the beginning of, like, the Mia Fey case would eventually get to this point where he did the shit that Gant did, that he did the shit that Sky did, that he did the shit that Von Karma did. He would have gotten there eventually. And every time that we've done a case with him, we've slowly been breaking down these walls. Until we get to this case, where he's realizing that he's inadvertently done that shit before, and realizing that he would have become that if this hasn't been happening. Like, entire ego death is what Edward's been experiencing this entire fucking game. That thought terrifies, uh, terrifies me. That's why I can't continue on as a prosecutor. I mean, we did see this, the, the resignation thing you had before. You're still planning on that, I imagine. Edgeworth, don't you understand? Damon Gant and your mentor, Manfred von Karma. Ugh. Were both the best of the best when it came to fighting crime. But they both made the same mistake. Being criminals. You said in order to fight crime on my own, I'd need a weapon. That may be true, but think back to today's trial. You weren't alone. <laughs> you were working together with Mr. Wright. Like, this entire case, we've been cooperative. Like, we've been actively working together. We've barely been specifically defense attorney and prosecutor. So solving crimes bad, but doing crimes bad too? Ah! <laughs> As I said, ego duh. Because of that partnership, you were able to present evidence that otherwise would have gone undiscovered. Isn't that right, Mr. Ryan? <laughs> Narahodo, Narahodo. Huh? What? Oh, yeah, what? What is this, a pop quiz? Come on, Mr. Wright, show him what Lana's talking about. Evidence, huh? Something that neither Edgeworth nor I would have been able to find on our own. I have an answer, but it's really fucking corny. I have an answer, but it's really corny. Is it this? Again, these are the ones that I will ask because you only get one shot at it. And I want to get the good story thing. This is, an, uh, this is a really corny answer. But I think it's what the game wants me to go for, because what else would make sense? <laughs> That's correct. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's so corny. Literally, we found it together by putting the pieces of paper together. <laughs> popcorn emotes. Actually, I think I got a popcorn emote. I think I got one from a hype train. Where's my hype train emotes? I don't know where my hype train emotes are. There they are. Yeah, there we go. Hype popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> hype popcorn. Take that! That's the picture I drew. It still doesn't make any fucking sense that, that that vase is drawn the way that it is there. That still doesn't make any fucking sense. That is by far the most ridiculous thing in this game. And again, we cross-examined a parrot at one point. <laughs> Fuck me. That's the picture I drew. A counter-attack began with this. You gotta have something a bit corny in your story every now and then. And then we're right at the end, so might as well. Like, I love it, but like, oh my god. <laughs> You had one half of the evidence, evidence list, and I had the other. Literally put our things together. It's so silly. It's so silly. I love it. Apart, we wouldn't have been able to completely restore Emma's picture. That didn't just happen by chance, Mr. Edgeworth. It's time for me to go. God damn it, you fucking sun sun prick. For fuck's sakes, just kiss already. My god. Mr. Edgeworth? If you'll excuse me. 
There are still some loose ends that need wrapping up. Take care, Chief Prosecutor. Edgeworth, for fuck's sakes, God damn it! Edgeworth, what will you do now? <laughs> you just keep running out of people as they go to leave. Well, whatever you do, just remember. You can let what happens kill the prosecutor in you, or you can let it help you grow. In the end, it's up to you. I know. It seems I owe my thanks to you too, right? Kiss, 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 kiss. <laughs> what I face now is my problem. Edgeworth, I'll be waiting for you in court. Farewell. God damn it. Guess I have to wait till the end of the trilogy for them to start making out. I'd better be going too. Okay, but I'll be by to visit soon. It seems we both have a lot to learn and catching up to do. Here, there's a little something for you. Ah! Scientific investigation book of the same little ducky from the evidence law book! Ah, it's so cute and adorable! <laughs> Scientific investigation. First book I've ever bought. I ever bought. Study it well. I need this series of books. <laughs> Yo, a fucking series of books that tells you about all of this shit with little duck pictures on it. That's a. That is the best. That is so good. Oh my god, I love that. <laughs> Thanks, sis. I will. And so another case came to a close. As for the sisters, I have faith. Faith that their lives have only just begun. And as for me, I think it's time I started on, on a new journey of my own. Ah, uh, all of the characters. And Edgeworth's last, of course he is. <laughs> now the black and white filter. A journey to rediscover myself. I shall rise from the ashes. <laughs> well, I don't go trekking off just yet, pal. Huh? What is a detective? I don't, I don't know which book I want to own right now. This book for the um or the bomb inside her from the Ultra Despair Girls. Oh god, not not. I don't Despair Girls. But it is hell, but I love how it ends. I'm sure this is very impressive on the DS. <laughs> Would have been covering both screens as well. Blo yeah, bloated as hell. But you're right. Fuck this sticks the landing so well. Fuck the this sticks the landing so goddamn well. <laughs> Just a little matter to be resolved about the Chief Prosecutor. It says she isn't supposed to be out of jail like this. <laughs> but... I thought you said it was okay. Yeah, well, it may be okay with me, but the folks at the prison are a different story. Huh? Basically, I had to bribe a gardener and sneak her out for 30 minutes. <laughs> Believe me, it wasn't cheap either. Jesus Christ, come shoe. Come shoe. Your salary's dropped so low, how do you afford that? Like, you literally don't have a job at this point. How do you afford that? Huh? Way to go, detective! I didn't know you had a wild side! <laughs> yeah, well, haha. <laughs> yeah, say. Oh, fuck me. He's had to sp spend so much money getting all of this done, he's gonna ask us to borrow 50,000 yen at this point. Jesus Christ. Mr. Ryan, here's the one who'll be fighting the bill. What the- He is asking me to lend him 50,000 yen! What the fuck?! I can't afford it, what the hell?! <laughs> Why, you think I can afford it with my salary? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me, pal. Huh? 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 <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Wright. You're the best. Oh my god, I don't have the money. No one pays me for this shit. Are you paying me for this case, Emma? Is Lana... Actually, Lana could probably pay me a fucking lot. She is chief prosecutor. She'd be fucking rolling in the money. Look at her fucking outfit. Lana, I need you to pay me for this case. <laughs> like, so much money. Why is it... I suddenly feel like I want to scream? <laughs> hey, I got an idea. Why don't we all go pay, out, pay it off together? Yeah, that's a great idea! Come on, guys! Let's go! <laughs> Let's go pay this coffee's bribe! Lawyer! <laughs> Scream into the DS microphone time to end the game. Her office is probably twice as fancy as Edgeworth. And also outfit. Well, her outfit's not more fancy than the one that Edgeworth has fucking framed in his wall, but still. Objection! <laughs> End with one final objection. Ah, uh, um, we're doing fingerprint dusting. Oh, we got other things? Arrange for a friend of mine in Europe to take care of Emma. I hope she'll be pleased to study under a top coroner. As for me, 
This affair has pretty much ended my days as a pro uh, um, at the prosecutor's office. Still, I'll manage my find my way back to the field somehow. How long will you be in prison for? Then I'll be out to investigate crimes together with Emma. Hey. Like, how long are you gonna be in prison for? This feels very corrupt. Lana's paying um, us all this case and we're using that money to bribe the guards to keep her out of prison <laughs> uh, while you visit her sister. <laughs> it's all right. It's not as corrupt as the chief of police. That's our metric now. Yanks, I thought I was a goner for a moment there. In the end though, they have not looked my unauthorized investigation at the chief's office. Yay. If we penalize you anymore, it'd be worse than firing you. <laughs> Yep, that's what they said. It just goes to show, you can't check me off that easily. <laughs> Look, you, you took down a corrupt chief of police. There's no way that the rest of the cops would be vindictive towards you and would be thankful for it, obviously. Well, then you actually dust the bottom screen while this is going on and you get some neat art. I'm missing art because of this? Damn you, can I do anything here? No, okay. Damn it, I'm like actually missing content because I'm doing the trilogy version instead of DS version. Ah. Oh, hey, Meekins. My new mission is to go to the main entrance and take care of Billy. Can you believe it? I've been demoted to a security guard. My partner is keeping an eye on the entrance for me today. I'll show them though. Someday I'm gonna make a detective. Yes, sir. I'm gonna be just like that, Dick Chinchilla. God, I hope you never become a detective. Fucking Christ. God, I hope. We can only hope. Fucking hell. My God. I'd start saying my thoughts on the game and stuff like this, like how I normally do over credits, but it's gonna be constantly interrupted by me having to voice that character, so I'm not gonna do it just yet. What do you have to say for yourself, Blue Badger? You clearly did a murder. My god. I like how the Blue Badger is considered an important enough character in this case that even it gets a little bit of like a shot. Hey! And everyone cheers for him finally fucking breaking! Yes! It's all been worth it. It's finally fucking dead. <laughs> this entire thing's been worth it. <laughs> the great evil is defeated. Yay! <laughs> hey, Kabayashi. What is it? Can you see I'm having a showdown with my steak lunch partner? Miss Starman, she's taking not this enemy. She's in one of the guards, it seems. Well, cowboy, looks like you did it. We even gave my manor back her smile. Can you make sure Billy and the gang get their water? It's alright, I'm sure Makins won't accidentally pull whiskey into the cactus. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it will be fine. When do we get blue badger emotes? Looks like we won't be seeing each other for a while. <laughs> As a farewell gift, I put a new meal on the menu. The right way lunch. The top layer tastes as bitter as defeat, but the bottom layer is as sweet as victory. <laughs> Kids seem to dig the turnabout theme. It's a hot seller around exam time. Just make sure not to eat it backwards. <laughs> you say accidentally as if Marshall didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> it's fine, don't worry about it. Oh my god. Alright, what's your conclusion? I'll never forget what that young defense lawyer said after the trial. Let's see, what was his name again? Mr. Left? Anyway, he said he's been doing her something or other for uh, how many years? Well, anyway, I've got another trial to get to, so I'd better be... Huh? Oh no, I forgot my gavel! Here you go, here you go. Oh my god, we get to see his chair! We got to see his chair! <laughs> my god. I guess top layer, bit of bottom layer, sway also mirrors um, your experience with this case. True, true, true. It also it also applies to how the top is bitter and the bottom is sweet, just like Phoenix and Edgeworth. So that works out well. Um... <laughs> Maya, Maya, she's at a village. Ah, uh, nothing serves the soul like cr fresh country air. Still, sometimes you do miss hearing you and your objection. Still, I can't go back until I'm a full-fledged spirit medium. Mystic Maya, afternoon training's about to begin. Coming! <laughs> well, see you around, Nick. Hey, we got to see her again before the end. Hey. Also, is that the name of her village back there? Karain? Karain? I guess it'd be Karain. Is that the name of the village?
But we got to see her. Yay. That makes me happy. Like, we didn't get to see her for this entire case, which is over a third of the game. Won't be relevant until later. Mr. Edgeworth? Oh! I bought DLT. He's not here. Ah, his resignation letter. Yeah. <laughs> He's actually resigned. Alright. I just gotta deal with some shit. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Because, uh, oh. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to reach out. Thanks for coming to see me off. Oh, we're back at the train station. Can't believe I'm going to Europe. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Thank you so much for everything. I'm a little sad, but I'll be alright. Whenever I want to see Lana, all I have to do is open this book. So I think if she's going to another country, she's not going to be able to visit her sister in prison. She's not going to be able to visit her sister in prison <laughs> if she's in Europe. I feel like this game would work really well with for characters. It feels like if you lined up all the witnesses in this game and throw in Gundam to knock her randomly, you will be able to tell which one didn't fit. <laughs> true. 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 Alright. Open from the back. Aww. Photo. That train to Europe. Yeah, you know, from America. Oh, when they were much younger. Aww. Emma's hat has the thing from fucking Gant's tie. <laughs> hey! Hey! That's conclusion for all the characters. And right and um, Edgeworth are off doing their own things at this point. It's the police logo. That was um, Emma wearing Lana's hat there. Oh, it's the police logo itself. Okay. Okay. And with that, the first game in the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney trilogy, slash series, because it's like 10 fucking games in this thing, has come to a conclusion. Um, holy fuck, this game is amazing. Like, Fucking hell, this game is so good. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit, this game is fucking amazing. <laughs> like, it's not even just a, oh, yeah, this game's good. It's like a, fuck, this game is so fucking good. Yeah, how the fuck was this on the Game Boy Advance? This might be the, I don't know the entire GBA library, so I don't know if other stuff, like, stands out to me outside of, like, I don't know, some 2D platformers, but even though I haven't played a bunch of them. Um, this should, like, I mean, obviously, you, you just can't rise from the ashes, but even outside of that, uh, like, best Game Boy Advance game? I mean, other than maybe the other Phoenix Wright games, I don't, I don't know if the games get better or worse from this point, I don't know what people's opinions are. That ends with my hollow chance, if you keep playing, anything I say is blind speculation. Eh, well, I'm gonna, uh, I'm obviously gonna keep playing, I'm doing the entire series. I'm not gonna start Ace Attorney 2 straight away um because that's just not how i do series i don't do one immediately after the other even yakuza i'm taking like a month break before i start the other this is going to be a bit before i come i come back to this um just because i have so many um games to, to go on but rest assured i'm gonna get through the entire franchise at some point it'll just take several years um but again when i like a franchise i want to savor it so it'll last for a while I only want to have people to be kind of down on off the top of my head is four, but I don't think anyone actually outright dislikes four. Okay. And there's, like, again, there's so many games to go forward for. There is so, so, so many games ahead of us. And wow, what a start to the franchise. Uh, this game, oh my god, I don't even know how to, like, <laughs> I don't even know how to summarize how fucking good this game is. Um... Like, the things that, I mean, again, the things that I've been praising this game for, yeah, Phoenix Wright, Professor Layton, no, I'm playing that. I'm literally going to also be doing the Professor Layton games, don't worry. I own the first three DS Professor Layton games, and I'm going to be buying more. I'm going to be playing through, that's also part of the reason why it's going to take a bit for me to go back to this, because I'm going to go back and forth between Ace Attorney and um, Professor Layton. Because in both of those things, there is, like, I think six games before their crossover, and the crossover is their seventh entry for both game um for both series 
So there is that. But also, I don't. I'm probably. Not, I don't know if I'm going to bounce between these two exactly one after the other because I also want to do Metal Gear and kill the past. I don't exactly know how I'm going to go back and forth between things just because the schedule is so packed. But before we do Ace Attorney 2, like at the very least, um, Professor Layton 1 will be done and we're going to be bouncing back and forth with possibly Kill the Past and Metal Gear, getting in between those. See, my thought process is the idea of what I want to do is I Kill the Past, an Ace Attorney, a Metal Gear, a Professor Layton and just do those. And when I finish one game in that, I go back, I do the next one just immediately. My thought process is... There's no games individually in any of these that are particularly long. So even if I did those one after the other, it wouldn't take too long for me to get back to another game in the same series. But if it does take too long, I might change up how I do that. I don't know at this point. I haven't definitively decided. But like, they're the four big massive series that I want to get through. And they each have like 10 games. So it's going to take a while. But again, if this takes several years to get through all the Ace Attorney, I'm fine with that because it means I get to save Ace Attorney for longer. Uh, 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 the trilogy is considered to be the best in the series and I agree with that. Oh, you mean third game. The thing is, I've never... I When I hear people talk about Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, I basically, like, like, off, like when I see people just offhandedly mentioning it, I only ever hear people talk about the trilogy. And obviously now with Great Ace Attorney, um actually coming to the west i see people talk about that those games are really good as well but they're like towards the end of the series but like everything else between it the investigation games and like four five and six and i don't know if seven exists seven exists in either professor Layton or Ace attorney but i don't forget which one but i forget which one um i basically never hear people talk about like anything that isn't the recently localized um great ace attorney ones and one two and three but hey Layton has 7th, Ace Attorney does it. Okay, Ace Attorney's just got a shitload of side entries. Um, but yeah, this game fucking rules. Um, like, the characters in this game are so over the top, but they're entertaining, outside of certain situations. Um, I've, the thing I've mentioned before, the mindset of a lawyer. The thing that it took me a while to adjust to, because I was trying to play this like Thangan Rumpa. Um... The mindset that you approach trials in this game is really fascinating. It is really fascinating how... I mean, it's obviously not like real life realistic lawyering. Obviously. It's anime lawyers. But it's still like, you don't just approach everything with the immediate thing of present evidence to present a contradiction, that's your entire thing. No, you have to think about it from the perspective of what's going to overall help push my case forward and that's what you're aiming for the entire time but that's your that's your primary focus regardless of what you're doing and that's really good the mindset it puts you in is really sick um and putting you into that mindset along with its structure and pacing really makes you feel connected to phoenix like the emotions that phoenix is feeling are very often what you're feeling in the same situation the game does that really well and obviously pacing is fantastic um, literally the whole turnabout thing. Like, how often you start on the back foot, everything's against you, and you find that one crack, and you just start breaking down walls, or just making further cracks into that wall to eventually break it down, so you get to the point where you are just slamming your rival with, like, the person who you're actually trying to pin something on. And you're just slamming them over and over again with fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, until you break them the fuck down. God, this game is so good at that. It is so, so good at its turnabout concepts. Like, I understand why everything has the name turnabout in it now, because the turnabout is that emotional process of starting off on the back foot, you're completely fucked, and then fighting against it until you are just unstoppable, just dismantling them over and over again. Like, fuck. Like, for a visual novel that doesn't have voice acting and is all dialogue and, like, the action scenes are like when the sprites change for it just how it makes you emotionally invested and builds that up with the events that are, are, are occurring in the middle of a trial holy shit the emotional impact and hype behind this game is really fucking good this game is amazing i get why people have been telling me to play it for years this game's fucking incredible and i am stunned that it's as good as it is considering it was a fucking game boy advance game to start with so, um, days two and three, rise from the ashes were both about unrelated incidents to the actual uh, murder on trial. Yeah, because we had to, because we had to mindset of a lawyer to get there. The thing that I will say 
about specifically Rise from the Ashes, it's not the best case in this game. It isn't. That is still Turnabout Goodbyes. Um, Turnabout Goodbyes is still really is still the best case in the game for me at the very least. But if Rise from the Ashes wasn't so immensely padded, as in like most of the first investigation and first trial were kind of shit house. If they weren't as shit as they were by just being padded with awkward statements and awkward presentations and everything like that, um, and some of the events were moved up so you'd be getting to those like unrelated incidences faster. If it wasn't as bloated, Rise from the Ashes would be better than Turnabout Goodbyes. But I can't ignore the fact that almost the entire first third of Rise from the Ashes, I don't like. <laughs> I can't ignore that. So Turnabout Goodbyes is still the best because Turnabout Goodbyes has been the best case overall. Um, and I think the best moment of the game is still specifically the DL6 moment um, in Turnabout Goodbyes. Like, seeing how much Phoenix is just throwing guesses in the wind, how unsure of himself he is, and the fact that to present evidence in that, you are really just bullshitting at your ass. Even, like, emotionally how the player feels is just, um, I don't know, I'm gonna throw shit in the wall and hopes it works, because I've got nothing. And that's what Phoenix is feeling. And how much you're able to make that work to pin it on fucking Von Karma and get him done for it, that's the best moment of this entire game. And all of the lead-up in turn about goodbyes is really good for that. But, like, the second and third part of um, Rise from the Ashes, like, is really good. And I would say, like, on average, those parts are more solid. Like, it doesn't reach the highs of Turnabout Goodbyes with its ending, but, like, solving the Evidence Room uh, murder and solving, like, the SL9 murder and stuff like that, that stuff's more interesting than, like, trying to work out what Gordy was doing in the lake, why Larry was there, what happens, like, in the boat in the boatyard, what happens with, like, the body falling into the lake after the shooting and seeing Edgeworth like that. Like, solving... Solving the Evidence Room murder and... Um, SL9 is more interesting than those moments and like working out everything with the camera and Lotta just lying about being a witness and stuff like that like all of those moments are better than those moments in Turnabout Goodbyes but Turnabout Goodbyes has a really has the best part of the game in it with its ending and Rise from the Ashes has like a really 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 slow start and is a bit bloated and does feel like you're having to kind of run in circles to get to a point that you'd get to a lot faster than the others if Rise from the Ashes didn't have those issues, I would say it's better than Turnabout Goodbyes. But it does have those issues, so I can't say that. That being said, what was the thing that I said going into it? Turnabout Goodbyes is a fantastic ending for the game. It felt like the game ended because it did. So, even if Rise from the Ashes is good, it needs to justify itself as being the ending of the game instead of um, Turnabout Goodbyes. And it did that very well. It did that very well. It turned every character's views and, like, motivations and ideologies and stuff on their fucking head. Like, Turnabout Goodbyes gave a lot of characters closure, but Rise from the Ashes gave characters a lot of character development, because they had to reckon with a lot of shit. And knowing that that's what's going to lead into the next game, it's not necessarily a cliffhanger, but, like... You can tell that these characters still have places to grow and places to develop. Whereas by the end of Turnabout Goodbyes, it's kind of not that. Which again makes sense for they ended the first game and they made it all one conclusive package compared to they added an extra case after the next two sequels were already done. So let's give them places to go after that. Oh, obviously, like that's part of it and everything like that. Um, yeah, Rise from the Ashes did really well towards the end. I just wish it wasn't as bloated. Um, and stuff like that. Who's your favorite character in the game? Honestly, overall, I have to go for Edgeworth. Phoenix is good. Maya and Emma are good. But I have to go Edgeworth. Edgeworth's character... How much character development and, like, the changes that you see in where Edgeworth's going is really good. 
I mean, seeing that for Phoenix is good too, because you do see Phoenix go from extreme rookie, has no idea what the fuck he's doing, needs help, is breaking down constantly, giving up early, to being someone who is unstoppable when he's, like, how far he can push shit. He still needs other people to help him, even in Rise from the Ashes. He still had multiple moments where he was about to give up and someone came in and saved the day. Like, he still has those moments. He still needs to get past that. But he is getting better at it. And again, like, he goes from barely being able to do anything without being guided every step of the way to taking out the likes of Von Karma and Damon Gant with absolute, like, fierce confidence. But seeing Edgeworth go from like, close-minded, I'm here to get people proven guilty, because you can't prove that they're not, so my job is to get all of them proven guilty, to put them all into prison, to turning around, to kinda helping you find out the truth with, like, the Vasquez things, to just openly cooperating with Phoenix, while having his entire world view shattered, is, is so good. It's so good. And he's so Sun Sun. I love it. <laughs> um... This game's fucking phenomenal, and I am so excited to continue this series. Again, might take a hot minute before we get till we get there, but oh my god, am I excited to continue the Ace Attorney series. Holy fuck, this game has been fantastic. Um, thank y'all so much for watching. Holy shit, I am excited. I hope everyone enjoyed it. This LP did have some moments in it that may not be the most enjoyable to watch. But hey, growing pains. <laughs> growing pains for getting used to a new series um, and, and stuff like that. I'm now on the hype train. Choo -choo! So thank y'all so much for watching. I will see you when we get to the next game, which I don't know the name of. I'm just going to call it Ace of Sanity 2. So I will see you when we get to that. And until next time, this is version 2, signing out.